Boisington trying to advance to the second round of the playoffs as they get ready for kickoff against the Sterling Black Bears tonight at Elton Brown Field in Hoisington. Here's our Hoisington starting lineups for head coach Zach Baird in his fifth year picked up his 45th win in his career as head coach has an 81% winning percentage and his offensive line a little bit different going into the first week of the playoffs. Left tackle will be Nick Long, a 6'1", 190 senior. Jake Speck, a 5'9", 170 junior, will start at left guard. He replaces Chandler Blackwell, who shifts over to center, taking over for Jason Bradley. So Bradley's out. Blackwell moves over to center. Jacob Speck moves over to left guard. Blackwell, 6'2", 220 junior. At right guard, Riley Filburn, 6'2", 285 junior. And Cameron Schneewise, a 5'8", 175 junior, starts at right tackle. Wide receiver Mason Haxon playing in back-to-back -back games now after rupturing his spleen in week one against Pratt. Haxon, a 5'11", 160 sophomore, started at quarterback, but now playing as wide receiver since the emergence of Derek Boxberg at QB. Dallin Hutchcraft back at tight end, 6'2", 215-pound junior. In the backfield in that flex bone offense at wingback, Xavier Robinson, who has been putting it on as of late, 5'10", 165 senior, had 10 carries, 109 yards, and a touchdown against Norton. He also had a catch that went for 75 yards and a score against the Blue Jays. The other wingback, Braxton Donovan, 5'10", 160 senior, has 58 carries, 346 yards so far in the season. Fullback, Wyatt Pedigo, 6'200", pound of junior. That game against Norton put him over 2,000 yards rushing in his career on the season. He has 1,527 and 22 touchdowns. The Hoisington quarterback, Derek Boxberger, 6'155", senior, played in three games as a freshman, seven as a sophomore, five as a junior, but never started until his senior year. Haxon went out with the ruptured spleen after week one. Boxberger has filled in nicely, has completed 23 passes for 400 yards, and has rushed for over 140 yards so far on the season as well through his second touchdown pass of the season just last Friday night when he hooked up with Xavier Robinson for that 75-yard score. Let's look at our starting lineups. Captains are out at midfield. As Xavier Robinson, Jason Bradley, Nick Long, and Braxton Donovan out there for the Big Red Machine wearing their red jerseys, white numbers with the white pants, and, of course, the white helmets with the Cardinal logo on both sides. Sterling, they kind of look like the Oakland Raiders out there. They have these silver pants, the white jerseys, the black numbers, and then the white helmets with that thin black stripe down the middle of those helmets as the coin toss taking place right now. Cardinals, we, we've mentioned a couple times, they're used to getting into the playoffs. They've been in the playoffs seven straight years. They're, loose, they're used to winning in the playoffs. They've won their opening round game the last four years, but it never gets old, the start of the playoffs, as here you go. And like you said, it's one and done. That excitement, you can feel it. Just a little bit extra tonight at Elton Brown. Yeah, kind of like it was last week, this week, a little more, because this is it. If you don't win, you're done. And the big red bird uh, down on the east end of the football field. Neil Ness made a giant cardinal. Just an awesome looking bird. And if the bird's out, it must be a big game. So that's fun to see it out. It's always fun to see out. And the Cardinals and the Black Bears match up. It's been a while for these two teams and we'll see what happens tonight. Both team has some skill sets. We'll see which defense can slow the other one down. Yeah, they used to meet up a whole lot when they were playing in the same conference in the CKL, but then it was Sterling. They moved out of the CKL after the 2015 season, and Hoisington and Sterling, they haven't hooked up since. So the last meeting back in 2015, Hoisington won 56-0. That game was here at Elton Brown Field. The last win for Sterling against Hoisington came back in 2011. They knocked off the Hoisington Cardinals by a score of 14 to 8. But the Cardinals, they've really had the number of Sterling as Hoisington has won 8 out of the last 10 games against the Sterling Black Bears. Sterling won the opening, the coin toss, so they elected to defer, and they will kick off. Poisington chooses to receive the football, so it'll be at Logan Weigel to tee things up at the 40-yard line. Xavier Robinson, Braxton Donovan back deep to receive the football for Hoisington. 6-2 and two on the season. 
Sterling coming in with a record of 3-5. and five. The winner tonight takes on either Cimarron or Ellsworth as the Blue Jays 7-1. They're district champs out of district number 7. And Ellsworth, they picked up the 4 seed. They needed a little bit of help last Friday night, but that dominating win against TMP propelled the Bearcats into the playoffs. Poisington gets the winner of that Cimarron or Bearcat game if they win here tonight. Got to take care of business against a 3-5 and five Sterling team as the referees ready to go. And Logan Weigel puts the clock well, the clock not quite ready for 12 minutes so far here at Elton Brown Field. So waiting on that clock here in Hoisington, and now they get ready to go. Sterling out of the heart of America League now for head coach Derek Schneider. He's been on the staff for a long time. He spent 10 years on the staff, and he's always been the assistant. Took over for Tyson Bowerly after he left for Heston a couple of years ago. So Derek Schneider now in his second year has an overall record of 9-7. and seven. The offense has been pretty good for Sterling so far on the season. It's been that defense that has been suspect, and that's what we're going to see first as Logan Weigel is about ready to kick this one off as the clock is still having some issues at Elton Brown. So it works good for four weeks out of the eight-week regular season. And when it gets to go time, a little bit questionable here at Hoisington, but <laughs> I, keeps, I think we're ready to go. Clock keeps doing things on its own, but it looks like we're ready to go. There's the whistle. Opening kickoff brought to you by Barton Community College. Find out what drives you at Barton. Build it at the 11-yard line by Xavier Robinson. Has a seam to the 35-yard line, and then he is spun down by Trayvon Jones at the 40. It's going to be a return of nearly 30 yards for Xavier Robinson out to the 41-yard line, and he nearly took that one the distance. But Trayvon Jones, a 5'10 freshman, held on for dear life. Hoisington starts out with the football at their own 41. Yeah, that's one thing. The Cardinal uh, return teams run up the middle more than they had in the past, and a great seam right up the hash. Pettigo in the backfield with Robinson to his right, Donovan to his left in that flex offense. One wide receiver near side is going to be Mason Haxon. Derek Box first surveys the defense, finally goes under new center. Chandler Blackwell shifting over from left guard. Handoff goes to fullback. Blackwell gets it. A lead block out for Wyatt Pettigo. He's brought down by their leading tackler, Brady Myers, out near the 47-yard line on a gain of six yards for Pettigo. Yeah, basic play, which everything runs off of. Uh, almost uh, had to go up the middle over center two guards nice way to start six yard game Avery Brewer there is the wide receiver Myers he leads the team in tackles 60 takedowns so far on the season here's second and four at their own 47 yard line second play of the game another handoff goes to Pedigo got wrapped up around the ankles and he's finished off by Dylan Stewart up top after a two yard gain out to the 49 it'll be third and short for Hoisington back to back carries for Pedigo this one goes for two yeah, opposite side over tackle this time, and and they hit him at the line of scrimmage, and Pettigo drug him for a couple yards, but it brings up a big third down at our own 49. Hoisington averaging 35 points per game. They've been really good on third down, especially in third and short. Two wide receivers set. It's going to be Brewer and Haxon. They have it at their own 49-yard line. Get, need to get to the other 49, and they'll keep it with Pettigo, and the ball comes out. Boxberger pulled it back out, and then he loses the football in an exchange, and Sterling comes up with the pigskin at the 50-yard line. So I don't know if Boxberger was trying to pull that one out of Pettigo, but they got busted up at the 50-yard line, and Boxberger unable to get the football back. A turnover for Hoisington on their opening drive on three plays. Sterling has the football at the midfield mark. Uh, indecision back there that time. Didn't know what was going to happen between the running back and the quarterback. Fake to Pettigo. All of a sudden, the ball's on the turf. Great start for the... Bearcat off uh, defense right now. Let's see what our defense can do against them. Yeah, we mentioned the one that part of the game was suspect for Sterling was the defense, and they come up with a turnover. Here's first and ten. Rollout play for Brady Myers. Now steps up into the pocket, running for his life. It gets a block out to midfield. Pettigo hits him, stalls him up before the rest of the Cardinals, including Dallin Hutchcraft, can bring him down at the Hoisington 48-yard line. So the scramble by Brady Myers gets two yards, second and eight for Sterling. Well, that's one thing good about the Cardinal defense that time. Roll up, pass to the right, and he couldn't find anyone to throw it to, so he started scrambling, and the Cardinal defense, Pettigo, was shadowing him and wouldn't let him get 
much past the line of scrimmage. Myers has rushed for over 550 yards on the season. He adds two to his total. Here's second and eight at the Hoisington 48-yard line. Two minutes into our first quarter, scoreless Cardinals turn the ball over on their opening drive. It's going to be a design draw play here for Myers, and he is stacked up shy of the 45-yard line. It'll be another gain of two yards, bringing up third and six at the Cardinal 46. A little crease to start with, design quarterback keeper right up the middle. A crease to start, but boy, it closed fast. And in two plays, it's five yards, so it's third and five for the Black Bears at the Cardinal 45. Well, Brady Myers, six foot, 175 or 170 pound junior. He's not overly big, but he is really, really tough. One of the toughest players out of the heart of America. Four wide receivers set here on third and five. They're going to be another draw play here for the quarterback, and Myers is upended down near the 42-yard line. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down marker. Needed to get to the 41. He's down at the 41 on a four-yard pickup, setting up fourth and one at the Hoisington 41. Quarterback keeper right up the middle on uh, the first play. That time, quarterback keeper, but he had an option read to take, and he decided to cut it up going over right tackle. And once he decided to go, he picked up four in a hurry, and they're going for it, fourth and one at the Cardinal, 41 yard line. 8.50 to go here in the first quarter, scoreless game. Four wide receivers, two to each side. It's Allen Anderson to the left on fourth and one of the quarterback, Myers. He'll keep it himself, has the first down. Robinson spins him down at the 35-yard line. He needed one yard. He picks up seven, and Sterling picks up a first down on the opening drive, and they have it first and 10 at the Cardinal, 34. Yeah, this quarterback's pretty darn good. It's a play designed to go to the right, but he was keeping all the way over left tackle. Pulled it out, came around the left. The blocking was there, lowered his shoulder, and picked up the first down. Sterling will rotate a lot of guys in. Usually that new guy brings in the play, and this time Anderson lines up to the right of Brady Myers, the quarterback, in shotgun. First and 10. It's going to be another keep by Myers. Works the right side. Pedigo holds on to his ankles down at the 25-yard line. It's going to be a pickup of nearly 10 yards on the play, making a 9-yard gain. For Brady Myers, 8.13 to go here in the first quarter. A flag does come out as we see our first hanky so far here tonight. And Sterling starting to march backwards. That's good news for Hoisington because that was another big run of nine yards for Brady Myers. Yeah, one thing about it, it is bad for Sterling, but they've found something that's really working against this Cardinal defense, and that is the quarterback keeper getting the team going one way and then he cuts off of it or a fake pitch, but whatever they're doing at the line of scrimmage they have our numbers so far with the quarterback run game so the penalty will push them back all the way to the hoisington 44 yard line setting up first and 19. still four wide receivers run option play is going to be a handoff to anderson gets his first touch takes it around the right side and gets back near the original line of scrimmage on a gain of nine yards before finally being brought down by josh ball and xavier robinson under eight to go in our first quarter zero zero game as it'll be second and ten for sterling well, what have they done the whole game? Run the quarterback. This time the quarterback fakes it, gives it to the uh, trail back, and he showed some speed. That's what Coach Baird was a little concerned about, team speed on this Black Bear, and he got around the corner and picked up 10 yards on first down. And it's not an overly big Sterling team, but they're playing efficient right now. Second and 10 at the Hoisington 34. Another draw play for Myers, and this time he gets hit pretty hard. Cameron Schneeweiss finishes it off, and Riley Filburn had a paw on his jersey, slowed him up just enough before Schneeweiss finished it off at the line of scrimmage. No gain, a third and 10 at the 34. Yeah, Schneeweiss and Petty go. Riley Filburn in the backfield, had an arm on and kind of twisted his shoulders around enabled our two linebackers to come up and make the play so no gain on that play third and ten well sterling averaging 276 yards per game and they'll come out and shotgun on the right hash two wide receivers near side to the far side third and ten near the hoisington 35 bubble screen is deflected and nearly intercepted by holt hanslick and if he would have held on to that, there was nobody going the other way. He would have had six. Can't hold on to the football. Incomplete pass, fourth and ten. It's like the coaching staff is saying, watch the bubble, watch the bubble. And that's exactly what he did because there were a lot of Cardinals in coverage, blew up the blocking and hold. 
He's, he's going to be dreaming about that one for a long time, but it's a good defensive play to break up the pass. Brings up fourth and ten. 6.47 to go in our first quarter. They'll go for it again at the Hoisington 34-yard line. This time they stack it up over the right, bring the wide receiver's left side in tight. Fourth and ten at the Hoisington 34. Out of the gun. Myers receives a snap, rolls out left side, throws against his body, finds a man in the screen. is going to be caught by Cody Royer, and he immediately is hit out of bounds. And a great initial hit by Mason Haxton. He hits him after a two-yard gain on fourth and ten. Hoisington will take over on downs at the 33. Well, they had ten yards to go. Mason Smart, he knew the uh, ba- uh, receiver was in front of him, let him catch it, and then a great form tackle, holding him to little yardage on the play. So the Cardinals take over on downs after a pretty – Pretty successful first-time drive for the Sterling Black Bears. Yeah, Cardinals offensive series went three plays before that bad exchange between Pedigo and Boxberger resulted in a fumble. Sterling converted on one first down, but stalled out after that. Here's first and 10 for Hoisington at their own 33-yard line. Option play, toss, goes out to Pedigo, makes a juke to the 35-40, and then a stiff arm, and he is stumbling down out the 46-yard line. And another touchdown-saving tackle by Casey Duff out near the 45-yard line. Otherwise, Pedigo will be off to the races. That's going to be a gain of 15 yards for Pedigo. Yeah, like uh, last week was Robinson getting that pitch. This time it was Pedigo getting the pitch from his B-back position, and he made a great cut at the line of scrimmage, big hole, and then almost took it to the house. Three carries, 22 yards for Pedigo so far here in the first quarter, under 6.20 to go, scoreless at the 46-yard line. Boxberger with the snap, another option play, late toss out to Donovan, makes the cut at the 50-yard line, and then on his juke, he's cut down again by Casey Duff. He's been active coming from that cornerback position. It'll be Donovan on a six-yard gain out to the Sterling 48. Well, the Cardinals are employing that option uh, series a lot in this uh, in this particular time they have the ball, and that's going to open things up in the middle. Sterling has to respect our wide game because we're gaining yards, and we all know what we can do up the middle. Donovan hasn't been getting as many carries, especially with the emergence of Robinson. Here's second and five at the 49-yard line in Sterling territory. Boxberger to throw, quick throw. Haxton has it at the 40-yard line, goes down the sideline and brought down by Casey Duff again, but it'll be a first down out to the 38 on a pass and catch of 11 yards. Well, the Cardinal offense really doing some great things in this second drive they have that time. A pass thrown before Haxton makes his cut. He turns around. The ball's right there about seven yards. He picked up another seven or eight. So great pass play. Nice one to complete to start. 5.28 to go first quarter. Scoreless here in their opening frame. Three wide receivers. Robinson lined up in the slot. Boxberger turns around, bestows the football to Pedigo. A juke to the 30. Angles back out to the left to the 20. And again, pushes it out to the sideline. 15. Makes another move at the 10-yard line and falls forward down near the 5-yard line. A 32-yard scamper as it was Wyatt Pedigo nimble going left and right across the field and takes it to a first and goal situation at the 5. Well, what happens when you get successful plays to the outside. We just talked about it and a pass play. It opens up the middle and that time Wyatt Pettigo in the, in the second level with green space in front of him. Uh, Black Bears are lucky he didn't score. Josh Ball now comes in at fullback for Hoisington after that big run by Pettigo. First and goal at the five-yard line. Cardinals looking for the first score here tonight. Toss play. Donovan has it on the near hash and then cuts once and gets into the end zone. Unable to bring him down is going to be Logan Weigel. He had a chance, but a nice cut by Donovan. Touchdown, Hoisington. 4.50 to go in our first quarter. 6-0, the big red machine. Yeah, and the key to that is he had great blocking out there, and he is in the position. The play timing was perfect. He is in position to make a cut off the block, and he was sealed up. Everyone was sealed up to the inside. He waltzed into the end zone. What a great drive for the Cardinals on that second possession. So after the five-yard rushing touchdown for Donovan, he comes on to do the extra point duties. Avery Brewer, his holder, snap is there, and the kick is on its way, and it is good. So just under five minutes ago, Hoisington turns the ball over on their opening drive. The second time they get it, and they march down the field and score on a five-yard rushing touchdown by Braxton Donovan, and they're on top 7-0. to It's Cardinal football in 100.7 Eagle Country. Braxton Donovan picks up his fifth rushing touchdown of the season from five yards out. Has Hoisington on top 7-0 against the Sterling Black Bears in the opening round of the Class 2A playoffs. 
4.50 to go in our first quarter. That drive, Blake, pretty decent drive for Hoisington. It was really highlighted by that nice run by Pedigo that went for 32 yards that took it down to the five and then capped off by Donovan. But after fumbling it that first time, to get kind of get those jitters out of the way in the postseason. Yeah, and we spread their offense in the very first couple minutes of the football game to open up the middle. And if, we're, if things are working wide, we're even completing passes. This Cardinal offense is really going to go to town. Allen Anderson and also Cade Wagley back deep to receive this kick. It's going to be fielded over at the right side of the field and then cut back up the middle on a return out near the 32-yard line. Gage Barney was back there instead of Casey Duft and also Cade Wilkie, and he returns it out to the 32-yard line on a 23-yard return. So it'll be Sterling with the football out at their own 32-yard line, down 7-0, just under 5 to go in our first quarter. Black Bears moved the ball in their first possession. Pretty darn good. Went from, you know, got kind of deep where they're going fourth and 10. Let's see if the Cardinals can stop them with a three and out. Again, that spread look for Sterling, averaging 25 points per game. It's going to be a quarterback keep, and Myers has a little bit of wiggle room before met by Xavier Robinson, shy of the 40, down at the 38-yard line. That'll be a gain of six yards for Brady Myers, and he's pretty got that, that quick first step, and he's got a nice burst as he goes for six. Yeah, he's kind of patient at, off of the snap out of the gun, and he went to his right, saw a crease, and once he sees the crease, he turns on the speed. That time, big six yards on first down. So here's second and four at their own 38-yard line, down 7-0, closing in on four minutes to go in our first quarter. Anderson to his right, fakes the handoff there. Again, Myers around the right side off the tackle, makes a nice juke, picks up the first down over the 40-yard line and down at the 48. It'll be a gain of 10 yards for Brady Myers. This is a guy that was all league second team as a quarterback last year. He battled some injuries this year, just minor injuries that just kind of kept him from finishing games off, but he's been fully healthy for the last three weeks, and he looks good. First and 10 at the 48. Yeah, the last uh, Bear, Black Bear drive was stymied by a big holding penalty after a big first down run, so the quarterback moving the ball again, just like he did in that first series. Two wide receivers out to the far side. The two to the near side spread out. Man in motion. It's going to be Farney. He gets a handoff, takes over the right side to the 50, makes a cut down at the 48-yard line. Josh Ball and Jake Speck will bring him down at the 47-yard line on a gain of almost six yards. 3.32 to go first quarter. 7-0 Hoisington, a pickup of five, bringing up second and five. Yeah, quarterback most of the time on the run game, and so he fakes going to the left. Looks like he's running the ball. Gives it to a running back, going over right tackle, finds a crease again, and picks up half the sticks on first down. They get back into Cardinal territory at the 47-yard line, approaching three minutes to go first quarter. Hoisington leads it 7-0. Fake handoff again. Myers just takes it right up the middle of the defense, brought down by Riley Filburn after a three-yard pickup out to the Hoisington 44-yard line. Third and two coming up for the Black Bears from Sterling. Yeah, they're in uh, four down territory again. Uh, two downs to get two yards. And with the way this quarterback's running, you know, I, w I wouldn't be surprised that they leave it in his hands for a little while longer to get deeper into Cardinal territory. Uh, Cardinals haven't figured out how to stop this quarterback run game yet and it's a big part of the Black Bear offense. They are 0 for 2 on third down so far here tonight, but they converted on a fourth down on their opening drive. Here's third and two out of the gun. Option play left side, toss in the backfield. Hoisington had a chance at Anderson, and then brought down by a nice tackle around the ankles for Xavier Robinson will deny him the first down run. So Anderson picks up one on third and two, takes it out to the 43-yard line, another fourth down coming up for Sterling. Now that was a great tackle and pursuit by Xavier Robinson coming from his offside safety spot. It looked like it was going to be a big gainer, but Xavier came down and took his feet out from underneath him. At the 43-yard line on fourth and one, Sterling will go for it with 152 to go in the first quarter. Quarterback keep, he just bursts right up the middle. Hoisington had an initial good hit, but it is going to be close to that first down marker. Right now it appears that Brady Myers will have that first down. Hoisington saying go the other way. And depending on that spot, it's right at the 42. It might look like it has it by about a half football. And just the eye test from across the field, the White Hat says first down, move the chains. Sterling with their second first down here tonight. They trail 7-0 to but had the football with first and 10 at the Cardinal 42. And now after saying first down, he says, eh, maybe not so sure. Bring the chains out. Yeah, might as well. It's a long way over there. We're on the 
uh, chains on the opposite side of the field. The eye test, like you said, looks like he has it by a football or so, but why not measure it if it's close? Well, Brady Myers averaging 81 yards through the air so far this year and also averaging 69 on the ground. But he has been effective so far with his legs, and he has it by more than a football, almost two football lengths. First down, Sterling, their second here tonight. You look at the run play calls so far for Sterling. They have run the ball 12 times so far here tonight. Nine of the 12 coming from Brady Myers. He has 35 yards. Yeah, the Cardinals did uh, stop him for a short game, but that's all Sterling wanted to do was get that short game. We knew who was going to run the ball. We just didn't know where he's going to go. Came over left guard that time. Good hit, but he is able to stretch it. Beautiful night in Hoisington at 64 degrees at kickoff. Four wide receivers set on first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Myers looks over to the right, takes a snap, flag comes out. It's a handoff out to Anderson, and he is smeared by Cameron Schneewise. He had a great line of pursuit of that one. Hits him at the line of scrimmage, no gain. A flag came out from the near sideline referee with 119 to go in our first quarter. 7-0 Hoisington. It'll be a false start going against Sterling. Yeah, Nick Long had him low, and Cameron came over uh, with that uh, slow down a little bit with him tackling real low at the shoes and Snaywise really put a pop on him at the end a good clean legal hit but uh, Black Bears kind of shot themselves in the foot now it'll be first and 15 after the illegal procedure penalty. Sterling missed the playoffs last year they were in the playoffs in 2016 though they lost to Heston in the opening round finished the season six and four they haven't had a playoff win since 2012. That's when they shocked the state and knocked off Smith Center in the first round, 26 to 16. Here's first and 15 after the penalty back at the 46 yard line. Run option play again for Myers. Scrambles out to the right, directing traffic, heaves it deep, and Xavier Robinson and jumps up and deflects the ball just enough as they're trying to get it down to the running back, Gage Farney, running a wheel route on the right sideline. And Robinson, who was beat initially, showed up that speed, caught up, and deflects the ball out. Uh, that was a great toss. Uh, quarterback kind of directed him midstream as he is rolling out to the right. Says, go on down, go on down. He threw it up, and what a great, oh, we're going to have. Defensive holding going against Hoisington, and they'll repeat first down. Well, that's a tough one for the Cardinals on that heave downfield. So Hoisington has their first penalty of the ball game. Zach Baird not overly upset as he continues to walk the other way here on the sideline and nearest us at Elton Brown. So I didn't see ten, who was called against. Yeah, a 10-yard penalty going against the Cardinals, setting up first and five for Sterling. So both teams exchanging penalties now in favor of Sterling as they have the ball moved up to the Hoisington 42. Again, four wide receivers set. They'll spread it out all night long. They send a man in, option, op, or a man in motion. Option play for Myers with Farney running behind him. Cuts it back up to the middle field and is tripped up down near the 35-yard line. That'll be a gain of about three yards for Brady Myers, bringing up second and three. Yeah, nice little fake. Why Pettigo had him dead to rights in the backfield, but he uh, used a ball fake with one hand and then cut inside of him enough to pick up Oh, maybe half of that five yards brings up second and three. Final 25 seconds of the first quarter. Hoisington leads it 7-0, to zero, but Sterling has shown some signs of life here on offense. A man in motion goes across the line. That's going to be Cody Royer. Snap comes to Myers, runs the option right side, finds a seam to the 30, and then bursts through Riley Filburn, grabs him and brings him down. It'll be a first down run out to the 16 or make it the 26-yard line on a nice run of eight yards for Brady Myers, what might finish off the first quarter. Yeah, another good run by the quarterback. Read the play and waited till pursuit got beyond him and then cut back against the crane at the hash mark. Picked up the first down. Sterling on the move once again. They pick up a first down. They'll have the football at the Hoisington 26-yard line when we start the second quarter. The first round of the playoffs has the Cardinals on top 7-0, but Sterling looking for an answer. It's Cardinal football on 100.7 Eagle Country. The start of the second quarter in Hoisington for the Class 2A playoffs. The Big Red Machine trying to advance the second round for the fifth straight year on top of Sterling, 7-0. But the Black Bears have been effective offensively, including Brady Myers, and he brings the offense to start the second frame with first and 10 at the Hoisington 26. Anderson to his left, looking to throw. Pump fakes now runs up in the pocket, avoids a couple of tacklers out to the 25, 20, angles out to the 15, 10 still on his feet, then brought down 
out near the five-yard line. Quincy Cross from his cornerback position brings him down at the six. That'll be a gain of 20 yards for Brady Myers, who looked dead in the water in the backfield but made it into a 20-yard run. Yeah, the Cardinals brought everyone up on the line of uh, scrimmage. Single coverage on the receivers out to the side, and he quarterback had no time to throw what he do stepped up into the collapsing pocket and then squirted it out to the left side and then no one was out there so he able to turn it upfield and get down to the six yard line first and goal to go at the six sterling moving after scoring 42 points in triple overtime last friday night to get this game in hoisington man in motion cody royer but a flag comes out as there'll be a timeout actually in favor of sterling did not like the setup there for head coach Derek Schneider in his second season with the Black Bears. Calls his first time out of the opening half. 11.25 to go in our second quarter. Yeah, well, Sterling and taking our hospitality very good. They really have an offense designed with this quarterback run game that's given us all kinds of trouble right now, as we'll see. First and goal to go up the six. Sterling starts the second quarter. He'll have Anderson to his left. Brady Myers awaits the snap from Dylan Stewart, his center, out of the shotgun. First and goal at the six-yard line. Myers calls for the ball, steps into the pocket, throws on a slant pattern too far in front of Logan Weigel, his leading wide receiver, incomplete pass. Mason Haxton had the coverage. It'll be second and goal at the six. When Myers looks to throw, he typically goes to Weigel. Gets 23 catches on the year. Yeah, he's a good wide receiver. I couldn't tell. It looked like we had coverage underneath the receiver, not only with uh, Haxton on the receiver, and he had to throw it away from the coverage in between him and the receiver, so uh, forced a miscue. Now second and goal, still at the six-yard line, four wide receivers set. Royer goes in motion across the left tackle. He goes, flags come out before they get that snap, and it might help out Hoisington here a little bit as three referees saw the same movement on that line. It'll be a false start against Sterling. 11.22 to go second quarter. A first and goal situation now to a second and goal, but after the penalty, it's going to scoot him past the 10 to the 11. Yeah, Petty goes up looking like he is going to run blitz right in between the nose guard and tackle, and it caused that center, I think, or the guard to jump a little bit. That's where we get the extra five yards, so we'll take it. Makes it a little harder play, second from the 11 instead of the six. And for Hoisington's defense, you probably have no doubt it's Brady Myers' time, still second and goal. They have multiple chances. He'll push Anderson a little bit further off his right hip, sends a man in motion. That's going to be Cody Oden. Here's the snap, roll out right side, looking to pass, zips it out, has a catch at the six-yard line by Oden and brought down immediately by Mason Haxon. Good pursuit and follow there by Haxon. Oden was kind of slipping as he caught the ball, takes it down to the six. It'll be third and goal. Yeah, nice play on both sides of the ball that time. Roll out pass, and he couldn't run anywhere, so he had that safety valve receiver just standing about the 10-yard line with the ball out there, caught it, picked up a couple, but good play on both sides of the ball. Brings up third and six, goal to go. Odin comes back in the ball game after going to the sideline to get the call. Has Anderson to his left. Four wide receivers set on third and goal at the six-yard line. Myers crouches down, gets the ball, draw play up the middle, starts left, cuts it back right. Hoisington spins him down at the four-yard line. Cameron Schneewise, also Riley Filburn, and Nick Long all coming in on the quarterback, denying him the end zone, brings him down just north of the three-yard line. Fourth and goal for Sterling. Yeah, big play coming up here. You know it's going to be in their quarterback hands or they might try to fool us, but that time misdirection play with the quarterback trying to cut back beyond the pursuit, and that time the Cardinals hiding the whole way. We are we have brought up uh, more people on, on the defensive line to try to get ten, the gap. Ten minutes to go in our second quarter. 7-0 Hoisington. Here's another fourth down. Fourth and goal at the three-yard line. Out of the shotgun. Myers takes it right side and Hoisington holds on to the junior quarterback and stops him short of the goal line. Xavier Robinson and Dallin Hutchcraft with a big tackle. Stopping on fourth and goal from the three. Hoisington takes over with a 7-0 lead and 9.50 to go in our second frame. Boy, that defense really stepped up and did something good there with their backs against the wall. Helped out by a procedure penalty 
that uh, they keep them out of the end zone, and you wonder how they do it the way they march down the field. Big stop. Now Hoisington needs a big drive. This one beginning at the two-yard line. Pedigo, he does have a 98-yard run already on the season. Lines up at the fullback. Boxberger takes the snap, bestows it to Pedigo, and trying to break free of the chains is stopped at the five-yard line by Allen Anderson. It'll be a four-yard gain. I'll say three and a half for Pedigo out to the five. Yeah, just straight play from the B-back over the left side, and he had a little crease, picked up three yards, but a good tackle that time. Two players on Pettigo got him low. 9.29 to go, second quarter. Hoisington with the football at their own five-yard line on top, 7-0. Two wide receivers, Cross and Haxton, ball on the near hash for Boxberger. Again, an option play out to the right side, a pitch at the five-yard line. Donovan, flags come out from every direction, and Donovan is going to lose a half yard on the play back to the five-yard line. But I mentioned two flags coming out on that play. 9-11 to go, second quarter, 7-0 Hoisington here in the opening round, the Class 2A playoffs. Now they had that option sniffed out the whole way. Too many people out there to cut around, and we'll see what happens on the penalty. Uh, Stop for no gain on the play, but the flags came out. Hoisington with one penalty so far here tonight. It's Sterling with three. Cardinals on top, 7-0. to Thanks to a five-yard rushing touchdown by Braxton Donovan. Just joining us, it was not a great start for Hoisington on an opening drive. They turned the ball over three plays in on exchange between Boxberger and Pedigo. Copped up the football right at the 50-yard line. Sterling had a first down, but then they stalled out. Got the ball back to Hoisington. Cardinals score on their second possession. Now their third touch of the football and trying to get out of the shadow of their own goal line. Finally, the White Hat comes over to the near sideline. It will be a holding penalty going against the Cardinals. But after that, great tackle in the open field on Donovan back at the five-yard line. It'll be Sterling denying the penalty, and he'll keep it at the five-yard line. So it'll be third and seven here for Hoisington with 9-11 to go in our second quarter. And Hoisington will send two wide receivers out in this formation, one to each side, ball in the far hash. At their own five-yard line, they need eight yards to extend the drive. It's going to be a give to Wyatt Pettigo, bruising his way to the 10-yard line, spins down to an 11, and he will be close to the first down marker. He needed eight, and he is going to be close down at the 11, between the 11 and the 12. And he is short by about a yard, fourth and one. Do you gamble at this point, up 7-0. to zero. At your own 11, you need one yard. Well... <laughs> Coach Barrett has a lot of confidence in this offense. It looks like Boxberger's out there. Huge gamble on fourth down just outside our own 10-yard line. And they will go for it. Pedigo, the fullback, 200-pound junior. Does it get the carry on fourth and one at their 12-yard line? Boxberger, a longer cadence, sends Donovan in motion, turns around. Pedigo has it with the first down out to the 15. He got hit the line of scrimmage but falls forward out to the 15 on a three-yard pickup for Pedigo. You can breathe. Hoisington moves the chains. Now that was a big fourth down play. Shows a lot of confidence in that offensive line and the running back. The whole mechanism of getting the play to the running back worked that time and picked up more than enough for a first down. After that 32-yard run by Pedigo, 3, 7, and 3 are his totals. Here's first and 10 at the 15-yard line. Robinson, Donovan, the two wingbacks as Pedigo doesn't get the carry. It'll be a toss out to the screen play, and Robinson hit immediately in the backfield and a great play by Gage Farney coming in from the linebacker position. 34 tackles on the year. He hits Robinson for a one-yard loss back out to the 15. Yeah, they had that sniffed out. A player on Robinson didn't fool him a bit, and he was in such good position that you worry a little bit about a pick six out there in the flat. But Xavier caught it, hit immediately, lost about a football on the play. Robinson had that big 75-yard reception last Friday night against Norton, loses one. This one back to the 14. Here's second 11. Man in motion is going to be Donovan. The give goes to fullback, and Sterling is all over Wyatt Pettigo so far here tonight. He had that nice 32-yard run, but he is having to earn his yardage. Gets it back to the original line of scrimmage on a pickup of one. Third and 10 for Hoisington at their own 15. 7-08 to go second quarter, leading 7-0. to zero. Yeah, Another big play coming up, third and 10, deep in our own territory. This Sterling Black Bear defense very quick and gets a lot of people to the football. Let's see what happens. Do they have a 10-yard play in store here for third down? 6.52 to go, first quarter or second quarter. Cardinals on top, 7-0. 
Play action. Boxberger, long step back, floats it out to the sideline. Donovan nearly had the catch as he dove forward out near the 35-yard line. Just a little bit too much touch on that pass by Derek Boxberger. Fourth and 10 at the 15 with 6.42 to go second quarter. Yeah, that was a nice design play by the Cardinal coaching staff. Had just not executed the ball to the receiver just a little bit off. He had about two steps out there. It would have been a big play. But at any rate, the Cardinals forced to punt. So Steiner comes in to punt this one away. Cole's on the goal line. And a snap coming from the 15. High snap. Steiner brings it back down, puts a nice foot into this one, bounces down at the 42-yard line. Woodjack watches it fall across the 50, and finally they'll pick it up down near the 44-yard line by Dylan Richards. So good punts by Cole Steiner as it rolls its way all the way to the Sterling 44-yard line. 6.30 to go in our second quarter. Cardinals a one-possession lead on top 7-0 to against Sterling. Well, the Blackbirds had a 15-play drive that last time, got down to the two or three and couldn't get in. So the Cardinals, you know, this defense has to show they can stop this quarterback from running the football. They had a big stop on fourth and goal at the three-yard line in the previous possession. It'll be Brady Myers sending that offense back out first and 10 inside the 45. It's going to be a handoff stretching out to the left side, and Anderson is decked. After a two-yard pickup, Hoisington had a blasting hit after Anderson picked up two yards. Xavier Robinson with that smashing hit and a good spot there for Sterling. They're going to give him a gain of three out to the 47. Yeah, Xavier came up and almost tackled him, made him cut back. That was a big play by Xavier. Uh, picks up three yards, though, on that first down play, trying to go wide. They're setting up this quarterback draw or a pass play. Six minutes to go, second quarter. Hoisington leads it 7-0. First round of the playoffs at Elton Brown Field. Draw play again for Brady Myers. Runs right into Nick Long and finished off by Riley Filburn and Pedigo for no gain on the play to the 47-yard line. And a great job by Nick Long getting off the block just enough, and Hoisington finishes them off for no gain. Yeah, that's a play that's been real successful. Motion to the left side the quarterback fakes it and goes to the right side and uh, first couple of series he didn't have anyone out there to stop him this time nowhere to go stopped him for no gain on the play big third down play third and a long seven sterling waiting for the play to come in from the sideline finally Cody Odin brings it in. Four wide receivers out of the shotgun on third and seven at their own 47-yard line, down 7-0. Floats it out, left side. Royer, the intended receiver, and he got a couple steps on Mason Haxton, but overthrown by Brady Myers. So an incomplete pass, another opportunity there for the Black Bears. Falls to the ground, 5 6 to go, second quarter. Yeah, he was wide open, just overthrowing, didn't uh, have enough speed, or he uh, lofted it too much. That would have been a touchdown if completed, but it wasn't. Brings up a punting formation, fourth and seven. Myers also serves as a punter for Sterling. He's back at his own 35-yard line. Pretty good snap, brings it down, and Filber nearly got a paw on it, but he gets it off. Robinson catches it at the 15-yard line in the middle field, bounces it to the near sideline. Anderson giving chase, gets around him, and then he is blasted out of bounds by Cade Wilkie out near the 36-yard line. That'll be a return of 21 yards for Xavier Robinson. Just under five to go until halftime. 7-0, Hoisington with the lead as they get the football back at their own 36. Yeah, that was a good run by Xavier. Used his speed. He was caught for almost no game, but he is able to outrun him and run through a tackle, turned it upfield, picked up 10 more yards. So the Cardinals, good field position at their own 34. I'll say he stepped out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Brewer goes out to the far sideline in front of the Sterling sideline. Boxberger has the offense set. Since Boxberger, or should say Donovan in motion, tosses that way. Far hash, now out to the sideline, picks up a block from Avery Brewer, first down to the 45, spins off a defender to the 50-yard line, and then decked out near the track at Elton Brown Field near the Sterling of 45. That'll be a gain of almost 20 yards for Braxton Donovan. Yeah, quick pitch to Donovan, get outside pursuit, and then wait for a block. He cut up field, broke through a tackle, got to the sideline, picked up another 10, 15 yards. So nice quick pitch going to the outside to Braxton Donovan. You think about throwing new wrinkles in the playoffs? How about Donovan? He's getting some more carries here early in the first half. 446 to go on a 20-yard gain. First and 10 at the Sterling 46. Cardinals on top, 7-0. Trap play goes out to the right wing back. Pedigo lined up at the wing back, and he is folded over at the 40-yard line on a gain of six yards. 
Tick tock, tick tock, 4.37 to go second quarter. Hoisington on the move once again, second and four at the Sterling 40. Fake up the middle that time. Pettigo goes to the left side from his right wing back spot, cuts it up and picks up good yardage. Boy, he's really hanging on to the football tonight. Uh, and hopefully we'd have no more miscues starting out this uh, this playoff. Game. Hoisington turned it over on their opening drive here tonight, but lead 7-0. Here's second and four at the 40-yard line. Donovan, make it Robinson, goes in motion. Handoff goes to the fullback. It'll be Josh Ball as he's rumbling across the 30-yard line and then brought down at 25. So a change of speed a little bit. Josh Ball, a power runner. He comes in for Pedigo, takes it down to the 25-yard line, a 15-yard pickup for Josh Ball, who had a late touchdown in that Norton game in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's almost like, a, well, he's a new player back there giving Pettigo a rest. He's not going to carry it, but, boy, big hole right over center, two guards. Now the Cardinals once again in striking distance, five yards off the red zone. Here's first and ten. Ball stays in as the fullback. Robinson goes in motion. Back to Josh Ball off the left tackle, brought down by Logan Weigel, shy of the 20-yard line at the 21. This time a four-yard pickup for Josh Ball as Quincy Cross comes back into the ball game for the Cardinals. Pettigo getting a breather, stays on the sideline. Yeah, went right up the middle that time, and uh, Ball showed a nice little sidestep move to break a tackle just into the linebackers and then picked up three more yards. Cross the wide receiver to the left side, Brewer to the right side, Donovan Robinson, the wingbacks, Josh Ball three yards off his quarterback, Derek Boxberger. The snap is there. Boxberger looks to throw, throws it out the right side. Wide open is going to be Robinson, catches it at the 10-yard line, and then he is pushed out of bounds by Casey Duff. Another completion here for Derek Boxberger out to the, well, I'm going to say he stepped out near the 10-yard line. It'll be a 11-yard reception for Hoisington, first and goal. Oh, what a nice pass. Boxberger, we had a great angle on it up here. Boxberger had to throw it over a defender and drop it into a little zone right where Xavier was uh, wide open, and he hit him. Nice catch. Good pass, nice pass play by the Cardinals. Uh, Josh Ball stays in here on the first and goal situation. Two wide receivers to the near side, both Brewer and Haxton lined up to the near side in front of Hoisington. Boxberger with the snap, again through the air. It's going to be Pedigo out of the wingback position, catches it at the 10, breaks through a tackle at the 5, and is escorted into the end zone. Touchdown, Hoisington. Derek Boxberger with his third touchdown pass of the season. This one goes out to Pettigo, 2.58 to go in our second quarter, and the Cardinals on top, 13-0 against Sterling. Yeah, that was an interesting play. Pettigo at the left wingback spot. Uh, off of the snap, just kind of goes into the flat, straight down the line of scrimmage, and the player that missed that tackle in the backfield, number 10. Pettigo went right by him, and then, Bowled over a couple at the goal line. It doesn't happen often there for Brady Myers. He's usually a sure tackler. Here's Donovan for the extra point. This one is on its way and good as it's caught out near the American flag at Elton Brown Field. Under three to go second quarter. Hoisington 14, Sterling 0. It's playoff football on 100.7 Eagle Country. After turning the football over on their opening drive, Hoisington starting to settle in offensively and defensively as well. On top of Sterling, 14-0 with 2.58 to go in our second quarter. Tonight's game brought to you by Innovative Livestock Services, USD 431 Hoisington, and Claire Bart Hospital. I don't remember the last time outside of late in a game when Hoisington has been trailing that the Cardinals have gone back-to-back -back throws. <laughs> That's what we saw here tonight, and a 10-yard reception gets in the end zone for Pettigo. Well, teams are lining up seven, eight, nine, ten men in the box, and you got to do something to spread it out. And tonight it's been the pass play that's been really successful. We've missed one wide open one, but Derek's put it right on the money two other times. Fine catches this last one for a touchdown pass to Wyatt Pettigo. 258, boy, this game's flying wrong left in the half, and the Cardinals kicking off with a 14 to nothing lead. Saw a former quarterback earlier tonight. He's in the press box. Tyler Speck probably a little bit upset that Boxberger might be closing in on his touchdown total through the air after he throws his third on the season. Also, Grant Dolchek, he's back after graduating a couple years ago in the press box as well. Donovan to kick this one off. is fielded at the 15-yard line by Royer, and he spins out to the 25-yard line before stumbling on his own, shy of the 30, down to 29. 2.52 to go in our second quarter. Hoisington getting in a little bit of rhythm on both sides of the ball on top, 14-0, to but Sterling football at their own 30. Yeah, last play, the Cardinals' uh, last series, uh, first three and out that they've had 
tonight against this Black Bear quarterback run game who who can throw the football too, but they've really been relying on his legs and have had a 15-play drive, a nine-play drive, but no points. Again, four wide receivers. We've seen the majority of the game so far here tonight for Brady Myers out of the gun. It's going to be a keep by Myers, and he is smashed down. Wyatt Pettigo up top, hands look down low. No gain on the play, maybe a half yard just over to the 30-yard line. Great job by Hanslick and Pettigo. Yeah, the Cardinals back to their 3-4 uh, configuration on defense. As they got closer to the goal line, we had six, seven people at the line of scrimmage, and Holt Hanslick knew that was coming. You could see him sniff it out. He saw what play was going to be and was right in the hole when the quarterback tried to go through. Hanslick has been great at that linebacker position, getting into the starting lineup a few weeks ago. Here's second and ten. Ball still at the 30. It's going to be a snap out to Myers. Runs it up the middle. Breaks it out to the sideline. Hutchcraft giving chase, but he won't bring him down until the 40-yard line. It'll be a 10-plus yard carry. Here for Brady Myers, Hoisington thought he was going right up the gut once again, but again that burst, he takes it to the sideline to the 41 on the 11-yard pickup, first and 10. Yeah, he's dangerous with his legs, look like the Cardinal defense had him at the line of scrimmage, but he jumped sideways to the sideline and then has the speed to get around the corner, picked up 11 yards. Two minutes to go until halftime. Anderson lines on the right hip of Brady Myers, the junior quarterback. He started last year as well. He's going to be good, and next year even better than he already is. And this one was tipped up, and then Hoisington catch it off the deflection. They did. Oh, Hoisington Hanslick. comes up with the interception. You talked about it. Hanslick was right there as it was Royer out on the sideline, couldn't hold it in, tipped it up, and then Hansley comes up with a catch at the 45-yard line. The Cardinals get the football back with 149 to go until halftime. Man, what a play by Hold Hansley. Good coverage over there. It's hard to see how it exactly happened, but the Cardinals immediately on the whistle-blown dead ball were signaling interception. So what a play by Hold over there. Really stops a talented offense right now with 149 left. It'd be fun to get in one more. Hanslick, his first career interception. 149 to go, second quarter. Hoisington with it at the Sterling 45. Boxberger looking for another completion. Chucks it out to the right sideline, and Robinson never looked back for the football. Casey duffed out in coverage as Robinson and actually Mason Haxon was out there running down the sideline and didn't really have a chance at that one, but pretty good toss by Boxberger, throwing it nearly 50 yards, but incomplete pass, second and 10. Yeah, just great coverage out there, nowhere for it to go. Uh, in fact, uh, Xavier had to kind of play defense from the offensive side to knock that ball away. Brings up second, 10, 143 left in the first half. Boxburger has completed four passes so far here tonight. He's four for six for 20 yards and a touchdown. Pettigo back in as the fullback on second and 10 at the 45-yard line. Cardinals still have time to run. It'll be toss play to Pettigo, and he's going to have to make something happen in the backfield, unable to do so as he's crumpled down for a one-yard loss by Allen Anderson. And he was dancing around the backfield, but not really Pettigo's big specialty with no movement as he loses one back near the 45. Yeah, on the pitch, there's nowhere to go because they're – the play, either the timing was off or of whatever, but all the pursuit once he caught the ball was in between him and moving forward. Josh Ball slides back over to the fullback position here on third and a 10 at the 45-yard line. Boxberger looking to the right, quick throw out to the flat. Brewer has the catch of the 40, but spun down immediately after a six-yard gain. Avery Brewer with the catch, his fourth making his second catch of the season. Now fourth and six for Hoisington with 55 seconds to go and counting at the Sterling 40. Yeah, I really like these pass plays to the flat because the a quarterback's letting go of a Boxberger before the receiver makes his cut, and the ball's there when he turns around. The Cardinals go for it at the Sterling 40. They need five more yards, but now we're going to get a timeout taken by the Black Bears with 39.2 to go. Did not like the setup as Hoisington came out with a two wide receiver set. Mentioned needing five yards. They have it at the Sterling 40. Cardinals on top, 14-0. To but as we mentioned, you can tell Hoisington starting to settle in here. You feel really good, even what they're doing defensively, and the offense has been rolling. This one might be a little bit pressed with time, but still on top, 14-0, to feel a little bit better. Yeah, I feel a lot better about the defense, particularly in the last two series. The Cardinals, except for just some great individual effort, have basically stopped the quarterback run game except for one first down play where he picked up a first down. But uh, the defense has forced, you know, uh, two consecutive three and outs 
Cardinal offense, you know, is moving the ball, but they're not getting the big chunks of yardage that they are accustomed to. One big play from Pettigo, but the Black Bear defense is doing a great job of bottling up tackle to tackle. Uh, Derek Boxberger's passing has helped a lot. Uh, you'd like to see a big chunk of yardage coming up here. We just have 39.2 left in the half. Boisington making their seventh straight playoff appearance in 2018. Sterling, they missed last year back in the playoffs here in 18. 39.2 to go. Cardinals have the football at the Sterling 40-yard line on fourth and five. Hoisington is one for one on fourth down so far here tonight. Cardinals lead by two scores. Boxberg, nobody behind him. He's flushed out of the pocket and brought down immediately by Allen Anderson. Anderson had the beeline out to the quarterback as he rips the towel off of Derek Boxberger and throws it to the ground out near midfield. And it'll be a sack back to the 48. Turnover on downs, 35.4 to go. Sterling needs to go 52 yards for a score. Well, one thing about it, uh, they, they guess pass, and that's exactly what they're doing. If they sent their middle backer, and he was there on Boxberger as soon as he turned around and looked downfield. So we have a big, uh, you know, Important 35 seconds here for the Black Bears and the Cardinal defense. Anderson is 23rd tackle in the season. Now they need a big play on offense at their own 48-yard line. Myers will keep it up the middle, and Hoisington gobbles him up before he makes it to midfield on that Cardinal logo at Elton Brown. 27 seconds to go second quarter as the clock continues to run as Sterling still has one timeout left as he take it out to the 49 on a one-yard pickup for Brady Myers. Well, it kind of looks like they're content to let this Clock run down, 13, 12, 10. They don't have to run another play. They're happy to go in down 14 to nothing. Sterling has put a little bit of a question mark in tonight's ball game where a lot of people thought Hoisington would just completely roll against a 3-5 and five Sterling team that has wins against well, Ellenwood, Lions, and Southwestern Heights, but it's closer than most people would have thought. At halftime, it's the Hoisington Cardinals on top, 14-0. to zero. Halftime is here in Hoisington for the Class 2A playoffs. Back with the halftime show after this on 100.7 Eagle Country. Tonight's game brought to you by First Kansas Bank, Barton Community College, Scott Christian's Construction, and Mark's Custom Signs. 14-0 Hoisington, about ready to go for the second half. Sterling will receive the football. Make sure you check out Sports Day every weekday on 1590 KVGV and 97.7 FM at 1225. Steve Webster and myself talk about sports in Central Kansas, including the Hoisington Cardinals. Sports Day from 1225 to 1 p.m. on 1590 KVGV here on 100.7 Eagle Country. Cole Reif with you, Dr. Blake Harris, Landon Winkler, our producer at the KHOK studio. Uh, Sterling in those Oakland Raider look with these silver pants, white jerseys, black numbers, white helmets, and black S's on the sides of the helmets. Hoisington in the white pants and red jerseys here on their home field this Friday night. And as I mentioned, couldn't ask for better weather as that's barely even jacket weather here in Hoisington at right at 60 degrees as we're about ready to go for the second half. The Cardinals, they scored twice, a rushing touchdown by Braxton Donovan and also a touchdown pass for Boxberger as he hooked up with Pettigo on first down from the 10-yard line. Donovan will tee things off in the middle of the field right at the 40-yard line as the Hoisington Cardinals trying to get to 7-2 and two on the season and move on to take either Ellsworth or Cimarron next Friday night. Oh, kickoff is here in the second half. Donovan boots it down to the 17-yard line. Farney has it, and he takes it out near the 25 on a return of about uh, nine yards there for Gage Farney. So just getting started in our third quarter, Sterling gets the football back. They've had success. Brady Myers. 18 carries in the first half for 82 yards, and the quarterback, a junior, starts out this drive at his own 25. Yeah, great tackle that time. Open field, Dylan Richards on special teams comes down and tackles him as he's going towards the sideline. Nice way to start out the second half. Long way to go from their own 25. Hoisington with a shutout right now. They had a shutout earlier this year, 42-0 in Hayes against TMP. Out of the gun, a draw play for Myers. Goes off the right tackle, runs into Josh Ball at the 30-yard line. It'll be a five-yard pickup for Brady Myers. He's averaging 69 yards per game on the ground. He adds five to his total, second and five at the 30. Yeah, he's quite a quarterback, and they have a run game going with the quarterback. Evidently, they've done this all year long, but 
you know, he's already over his season average per game on first down, picks up five yards. Pratt's leading Concordia at halftime, 35 to 14. Second and five at the 30 yard line. It'll be another run, this time the opposite direction for Myers and he avoids one tackler brought down by Xavier Robinson just shy of the first down marker on a gain of three yards out to the 33. One minute into the third quarter, Hoisington leads 14-0, third and two now for the Black Bears. Quarterback up the middle, quarterback around the left side, that time number three, Xavier Robinson put a fine tackle on him, picked up a couple, brings up a big third down, third and two. Heston's on top of collegiate, 28-14 to at halftime. Another run play, Myers looking for the first down, he needs two yards, he breaks the tackle and another one, and he gets has Green Pasher in front of him. Out to the 35-30, 25-20. Haxon trying to chase him down, unable to do so. And it'll be a score for Brady Myers, who shed off two tackles right up the gut and takes it in for the score. 67-yard run for the talented Brady Myers. Yeah, two broken tackles at the line of scrimmage. He kept his legs churning. And then once he got by those two tackles, poor tackling that time by the Cardinals, Touchdown, a long touchdown run. All of a sudden, we have a one-possession game. 10.36 to go in our third quarter. Sterling, exactly what the doctor ordered, scoring on the opening drive of the second half. Extra point coming up now for Logan Weigel. He has been pretty good on PATs, 18 for 24 on the season, coming into the night, and he splits the uprights. 10.36 to go in the third quarter. Sterling scores on the opening drive of the second half, and they cut the lead in half. 14 to 7 is Cardinal football in 100.7 Eagle Country. Some other scores in the CKL, Smoky Valley in Class 3A on top of Cheney, 14-0 at halftime. Andale against Halstead. Andale, everyone's picking Class 3A. Fairly close, though, at Andale. 14-0 in favor of Andale against the Halstead Dragons. Scott City on top of Nickerson, also in Class 3A, 28-0 at halftime. And it was Hillsboro in Class 1A. And in the second quarter, is 56-7 against Yates Center. Hillsboro having a heck of a season on their way to their seventh win and advancing in Class 1A. Mentioned Phillipsburg in Class 2A. They've already won against Southwestern Heights, 55-12. to This one stays on the ground. Josh Ball loses it, goes back to the 25, picks it up, and then tripped down as a flag comes out as he returns her for a half yard out to the 26-yard line. Sterling all over Josh Ball after he bobbled that kick from Weigel. And now a flag comes out as well. It's going to be a block in the back against the Cardinals, and that is going to bury them here on this opening drive of the second half of the offense. Yeah, j- j- not what you want to have happen. If you're going to score, you're going to have to go the whole length of the field as the officials marking it off down to our own 14-yard line. So here we go. It is fairly quiet at Elton Brown Field right now. Hoisington leads 14 to 7. 10:30 to go, third quarter. Sterling scored. They had the momentum right now, and Hoisington backed up at their own 14-yard line. The senior quarterback, Derek Boxberg, then starts his first three years, starting in his senior season, replacing Hacks and tosses out to Pedigo, breaks through to the middle, bounces it out to the outside, to the near hash, jukes it back up the middle of the 45 to the 50, and Uh-oh. runs through an ankle tackle, and Pedigo Uh-oh. goes down poorly out of the 45-yard line. And as you mentioned, Blake, it looked awkward for Pedigo going down because it looked like he was still running out in the open oh and my. fell down on his own, and he is holding his right leg. I don't know if it's his ankle or his knee, But now, what was somewhat quiet in Hoisington is even more quiet at Elton Brown Field as Wyatt Pedigo on his back out to the 45-yard line on a big run for the Cardinals. Yeah, down, uh, it looked like someone had his shoestring and he was trying to pull out of that tackle and it came down awkwardly on the knee. You could tell it right away as a pin could drop in this stadium right now as uh, Coach Barrett's talking to Wyatt as he's laying there they're not doing much Uh, now they have a trainer out looking at uh, his ankle it looks like to see what's going on yeah he broke through another tackle the 45 yard line may have scored on that play but he kind of tripped up on his own and as you mentioned Blake completely quiet at Hoisington we will hold our breath as well take a break Cardinals on top 14 to 7 10-17 10-17 to go in our third quarter. The opening round, the Class 2A playoffs, back in a minute on 100.7 Eagle Country. 
Back at it here in Hoisington and Elton Brown Field. The good sign, Wyatt Pettigo was able to walk on his own to the sideline. He's still there. Josh Ball comes in on first and 10th, the 45-yard line, trying to go east and west, and he is going to be brought down for a one-yard loss back to the 46-yard line. That run by Pettigo before getting hurt went for 41 yards out to the Sterling 45. Ball loses one, second and 11, 9.50 to go, third quarter. Cardinals on top, 14-7, to but still holding our breath for Wyatt Pettigo. Yeah, absolutely, and it puts a lot of pressure on this offense right now to do something without their star running back in the game. So Josh Ball playing fullback, replacing Wypetigo. Donovan Robinson, the two wing backs in this flex offense. Handoff goes out to Josh Ball. He's tripped up at the line of scrimmage, falls forward for a couple of yards out near the 43 on a gain of three yards, almost four yards after losing one on first down, setting up third and seven at the 42. Yeah, and another thing, yeah, you have to mention it, uh, not only on offense, but on defense also. One of the stalwarts on defense, our finest defensive player probably, is sitting down with the trainer right now on the sideline. Boisington line. trying to convert on a third down, third and six at the Sterling 42-yard line. Trap play to Donovan, has some room out to the 35-yard line, breaks into the sideline, and a stiff arm frees him out to the 20 before he's tripped up and pushed out of bounds out near the track at Elton Brown. A big run on third and six as Donovan takes it inside the 15-yard line. Yeah, I think that's the first time we've seen that play. One of our mainstay plays. They, uh, go to the left side and then give it to Donovan going over the right side. And you could see it right away. The pursuit was all on the other side of the field. Big hole, and Braxton took advantage of it. A 21-yard run for Donovan out to the 16-yard line. First and 10 for Hoisden. Robinson goes in motion right to left. Toss in front of him. Picks it up on a bounce. Gets to the 15-yard line. And monster stiff arm. Doesn't get him much further, but he just shed off a tackler and laid a stiff arm on Gage Farr, and he got him off of him, but only gains maybe a half yard. A one-yard pickup for Robinson to the 15. Yeah, that was a disaster waiting to happen as the ball bounced off of the turf on the pitch, but right into the running back's arms. You know, that that one-yard gain was great after the bad start. That was the first carry for Xavier Robinson coming off a 100-yard performance last Friday night. Boxburg to throw, second down slant pattern. Haxton has to go in and out of his hands at the two-yard line. He would have been able to walk into the end zone. Instead, incomplete pass, third and nine for Hoisington. Oh, man, what a play, what a call, everything but the catch. Uh, Derek put it right in his hands. He would have had a touchdown. Brings up third and nine from the car uh, from the Black Bear 15-yard line. Another third down for Hoisington. Two wide receivers, Avery Brewer to the right, Haxon to the left at the 15-yard line. Hoisington needs nine yards. Option play, Boxberger tosses it to Donovan, and he is going to be lassoed down in the backfield. And as Farney and also another Cody Royer of Sterling brings him down, no gain on the play. Fourth and nine coming up for the Cardinals at the 15. Yeah, and I don't know uh, what we have out there. Is that a field goal attempt uh, coming for the Cardinals? Uh, fourth and nine. It looks like it. So Braxton Donovan, who has yet to attempt a field goal so far in the season, will take a 32-yard field goal attempt. 7.36 to go in our third quarter. Hoisington up by seven. The kick is on its way, and it goes off the crossbar as it clunks here this Friday night. It's on a beautiful evening. Just barely didn't get across there for Braxton Donovan as he hits it off the crossbar as it'll be Sterling football getting the football back in their own 20-yard line. Well, the Cardinals have a defensive stand coming out here. It looks like uh, Pettigo's ankle's getting taped up right now. It doesn't feel too good. There's no doubt about it looking at him down there, but... Uh, Coach Haxton, who's taped a lot of ankles in his career as a basketball coach, is down there taping it up tight. But uh, let's see if the Cardinals can respond. Uh, Sterling scored the last time they had the ball. Yeah, big 67-yard run by Brady Myers, the junior quarterback, out of the gun. Takes the snap, handoff, goes out to Anderson, breaks free to the 25 to the 30, back over to the near hash, and then have flipped over out at the 40-yard line. Hoisington says they have the football, comes out loose, and the Cardinals get the big skin. Another fumble. That is one thing that has hurt Sterling all season long. They had 17 turnovers coming into the night, and they commit their second here this evening. Hoisington, a big break. Anderson costs up the football at the 38-yard line. 
Well, what a huge play right after a huge play by the Black Bears where they picked up about 25 yards on a run running play. Cardinals back out there on offense after the fumble and the recovery. See if they can finish this one off. It'll begin at the 38-yard line. Cardinals running downhill on top, 14-7. Pedigo still out with an injury toss play. Robinson spins at the 42-yard line and it is brought down by Brady Myers at the 41. It'll be a gain of two yards. Robinson didn't have a carry in the first half. Two carries so far here in the second half and for three yards. Yeah, on first down, nice pickup on... Uh, First down, trying to go wide that time, but uh, the pursuit is out there for sure. Robinson did well to pick up those three. Under seven to go, third quarter, 14 to seven. Hoisington at the 35 yard line now in Sterling territory. Turning around, Josh Ball gets the football, lowers into a defender at the 30 yard line and goes down close to the 25. It'll be a nine yard game for Josh Ball, just power football for the sophomore. Yeah, power football. Once he gets to the second level, and that time the offensive line and the play call, the rhythm, everything worked well. He saw that crease, had a little burst of speed, and lowered his shoulder at the end. Kyle Haxon unloading a couple rolls of tape on that right ankle for Wyatt Pettigo. First and 10, and now down at the 26-yard line of Sterling. Man in motion, Donovan. It'll be Boxberg. Another trap play to Robinson. He cannot get free as it'll be Brady Myers just holding on to the right ankle of Robinson and drops him for a one-yard loss. Well, that time uh, the play Braxton Donovan ran earlier to get down there deep. This time tried it to the other side, but the Black Bears were in the hole, nowhere to run. Brings up second and a long 10. Back to the 27-yard line, six minutes to go, third quarter. Hoisington with the football on top, 14-7, to but Sterling with a little momentum, especially after the Pedigo injury. Man in motion, Donovan, handoff, goes to Pedigo, or should say goes to Josh Ball, and he is spun down at the 20-yard line. It'll be Dylan Stewart with the tackle, but another good run by Josh Ball on third and 11. Brings it to be a little bit more manageable fourth down for Hoisington. We'll call it fourth and two on another nine-yard gain for Ball. Yeah, nice play. A good blocking a line of scrimmage over the right side. Ball saw the hole, took it. And one of those instances where the Sterling Black Bears kind of threw him down and threw him forward for another yard. Well, excuse me, third and two here for Hoisington as they have it at the Black Bear 18-yard line. Man in motion this time is Robinson. Box for a quick give to Josh Ball as he tries to hurl over a defender. Has the first down over to the 11-yard line. Josh Ball goes airborne on third and short. Picks up the first down out to the 11. 5.27 to go third quarter. Hoisington, they can smell the end zone up 14-7. to At that time, not a straight handoff. That time, motion going to the left and on the backside gives it to Ball on a delay. Saw a big hole, he took advantage, first and first down. Over to the 13-yard line as we close in on five minutes to go in our third quarter. Cardinals could use another score with their star player, Pedigo out. Josh Ball again goes airborne, gets across the 10-yard line and down short of the nine on about a three-yard gain for Josh Ball. 5.03 to go, third quarter, 14-7. Cardinals in the opening round of the playoffs. Well, looks like Pettigo's, they're still taping. They taped underneath, they got his shoe on, now they're taping over the shoe. But the Cardinals second and eight after another run by ball on first down. That's going to be a lead foot if he can get back into the ball game. Here it is at the 10-yard line for the Cardinals. They can still pick up a first down inside the five. Boxberger pulls it out of Josh Ball, cuts it back at the oh. five-yard line. Flags come out as Derek Boxberger is close to the goal line, has the first down. But as we mentioned, a flag coming out, it'll be a holding penalty. Jeez. Going against the Cardinals, something they could not afford at this point of the field as they had second and eight at the 10. Yeah, nice little read by Boxberger. Cut outside, fake the ball going up the middle. Did not pitch it, kept it himself down the hash mark. And uh, at the end of the play, down where he was tackled, even though they're marking it off. Yeah, I guess about, about that. It looks like a that's from the spot foul, so it must have happened behind the play. All of a sudden, it... It'll be second short at second and 14. So they push it back out to the 17-yard line, 4.30 to go and counting here in the third quarter. Hoisting it, spreads it out with three wide receivers. Boxberger goes right, hacks him with the catch of the 10-yard line and can't get rid of the tackler and it's brought down out of bounds. They're going to say he stays in, 4.20 to go third quarter. Hoisington will have another chance at this one as Boxberger goes to the sideline to get the play call. It'll be right at the 10-yard line here for Hoisington, call it third and nine. 
Third and nine, two plays to go, nine yards. Let's see what happens. Uh, you know, the Black Bear offense, awful scary right now. You'd sure like to get up on two scores again on this fine Sterling team tonight. Can still get a first down at the 11-yard line. Haxton Brewer, the two wide receivers both lined up near side. They throw it into the flat. Donovan has a catch, makes a move at the 10-yard line, but then is Brady Myers cleaning off the play. It looked good initially there for Donovan. Brady Myers closed quickly down at the 8-yard line on a gain of three on the reception out in the flat. Yeah, reception out in the flat. It worked with Pettigo, and it worked again with Donovan. He made the first guy miss, but the rest of the team in pursuit brings him down. Comes out, it looks like we're going for another field goal. So an eight at the eight-yard line now for Braxton Donovan. He had a 32-yarder clank off the crossbar. This is going to be a 25-yard field goal attempt. Brewer, his holder. Puts it down. Donovan has this one on his way, and it sneaks inside the right uprights. This one is good. So Braxton Donovan has his first field goal make of the season in his career. 3.05 to go, third quarter. Hoisington makes it a two-score game on top, 17-7. to How about that? A field goal for the Big Red Machine, a 25-yarder for Donovan. Well, that's a big play. You know, that 10 points is important in a game like this because Sterling has shown they can move the football uh, after Clanking went off the front on a long field goal, is right on line. This time he kind of pushed it to the right side. It was from the opposite side of the field, left hash going up, and it snuck in the left side of that goal post to give us a big three points. Boy, what a long way we've come from our kicking game. Donovan's really gotten his timing down and has really performed well here in the latter half of this season. Well, that's something that we kind of noticed when he does get his timing right. He, he's not bad. I mean, he, he kind of has that range. They attempted a 32-yarder. That's probably within his range, probably right on the outside or maybe close to the outside, probably in be anywhere between 30 and, and 40 for Braxton Donovan if he gets a good one. And he got enough of that 25-yarder to sneak it in on the right upright. 3.05 to go third quarter. Hoisington leads it 17-7 to against the Sterling Black Bears. 3-5 and five on the season. They needed a three-overtime win against Southwestern Heights Friday night to get this game in Hoisington. Here's Donovan on the kickoff. End over end kick is going to be going over the head of Anderson. Has to retreat out near the 13-yard line. It's a live football, yeah. and Hoisington gets it. Oh Anderson just goodness. watched it. He oh thought my. it was a punt. He just watched now he has his hands on his helmet, and Hoisington dives on the football out near the 12-yard line. He was waiting for it to go out of bounds, but then it stopped two yards shy of the sideline, and Anderson just watched as Hoisington came sliding in to get the football. Wow, what a mistake, and what heads-up play by the Cardinal kickoff team. There are two guys down there and saw it. He thought it was going to go out of bounds, I think, and so he's just waiting. And the Cardinals pounced on it first and 10 inside the 15. Cardinals still without Pettigill trying to walk on that taped-up ankle. At the 13-yard line for the senior, Derek Boxberger. Donovan goes in motion. Josh Ball, the sophomore, navigates his way to the 10, to the 5, and carries a defender wow. into the end zone. Touchdown, Hoisington. Josh Ball, 13 yards out, puts Hoisington on top, 23-7, to with just under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Order. Talk about Uncle Mo going back over to Hoisington. Oh, my goodness. What a play to come back right back after the big recovery on the misplay of the kickoff from the Cardinals after the field goal. One play, Josh Bull pulls into the end zone. Great blocking on the line of scrimmage as the Cardinals all of a sudden in about two minutes have 10 points and make it 23-7. to What a big sequence of events for this Cardinal football team. And it might be even bigger as the extra point is on the way and Donovan knocks this one through to put him up 24 to seven. If Hoisington can continue to score and maybe hold Sterling, you don't have to rush Wyatt Pettit go back in the ball game here for week one of the playoffs. Yeah, you wonder what they're gonna do. Wyatt's down there kind of running around. He looks a little bit gimpy on that, but I'll take it from uh, from the way we saw him go down. It could have been a knee, it could have been a bad ankle hurt, it, it could have been a lot of things, a big hamstring tear, who knows. But uh, seeing Wyatt down there with the taped up shoe about, I think they used the whole trainer's box to tape that thing up. And he's uh, on the sideline right now, not looking too ginger, but uh, you're right, that would be nice if we didn't have to use him. Uh, but uh, the way Sterling plays, 
you know, you wonder what's going to happen. The longer he stays, you know, not playing, the more less likely it's going to feel like that he can go out and play. But uh, let's see if we can have another one of those sequences. The weird thing is, coming off that last Friday night win against Norton, Pedigo had a career-high 28 carries. He was talking to Zach and the coaching staff, my ankles are kind of sore this week, Coach. We, well, you carried it 28 times, and it's kind of weird that he falls into a little bit of an injury here in the opening week of the football playoffs, and a flag comes out on the kickoff as one of the Hoisington Cardinals getting a head start downfield. 2.58 to go in third quarter. Hoisington on top, 24-7. to This is a 14-7 to ball game, a minute and a half into the second half as Brady Myers broke a couple of tackles right up the middle and ran it in for 67-yard score. And Sterling was feeling pretty good about themselves. But Hoisington, over seven minutes later, scored on a 25-yard field goal by Braxton Donovan, his first make of his career, put Hoisington up by 10. And then seven seconds later, after Allen Anderson fails to pick up the football on the kickoff, watching it on the sideline, Hoisington picks up the football, they get it at the 13, and then Josh Ball caps it off with a 13-yard run. Yeah, total brain freeze that time by the receiving unit from the Black Bears, and the Cardinals pounced on it. What a good turn of events. They are going to kick his way again. Instead, it goes back over to Farney, has it at the 19-yard line, runs it to the near hash, has a little bit of a seam, breaks through, bounces off another defender to the 45-yard line before a Cardinal sticks him. Right at the 41, a good return by Farney as he takes it out to the 41-yard line on a return at 22 yards. So good return, 249 to go third quarter. Hoisington leads it 24-7, Sterling football at their own 42. Yeah, they have some speed on this team, and after he, he broke a couple tackles, coaching staff for the Cardinals isn't going to like that, but he, it looked like he could have scored it out and been running to the house. Let's see what happens with this Cardinal defense, see if they can somehow contain this talented quarterback that's really run for a lot of yards The spread look for Brady Myers, the junior quarterback, running all the way to the left side. Philburn had an arm on him. Jake Speck finishes him off at the 40-yard line. They're going to say his forward progress goes out to the 43, a gain of one. A good job by Philburn and Speck on the tackle. Yeah, quarter, uh, quarterback run game the whole way out of the gun. He takes his snap, looks for a place to go. That time, no place to go as the Cardinals did a great job containing that talented quarterback for the Sterling Black Bears. So how about coming in for Wyatt Pedigo, a linebacker? Jake Speck makes an immediate impact for Hoisington, finishing off the talented Brady Myers. One-yard gain, second and nine at the 43-yard line, closing in on two minutes to go in our third quarter. Cardinals up 24-7. to Hanslick showing blitz. He comes. It'll be a screen pass, but low to the turf. Incomplete pass, trying to get it out to Gage Farney. About a yard in the backfield, but it's still a forward pass for Myers. Now third and nine. Third and nine, he just skipped it off the turf. Cardinals had it covered pretty good out there, but the Cardinals really aren't tackling that well tonight, and so anytime you give this speed some space, you worry. Uh, they've shown they can convert on third and nine, so watch the quarterback. Again, two wide receivers to each side. They'll stay on the ground game. They fake the handoff. Myers just squirts right up the middle, cross Jesus. half their midfield, and it'll be brought down by a whole hands like a yard shy of the first down, maybe a half yard. An eight yard pickup for Brady Myers on third and nine after the Hoisington 48. And again, they're eyeing it to the sideline. It'll be an official review or official spot and a measurement with 156 to go in our third quarter. 24-7 Cardinals Third and nine, you feel like you have him bottled up, and then Brady Myers just somehow avoids it and very looks very similar to a, a Cade Melvin, who we saw from Norton last week. Yeah, he just broke some tackles of the line of scrimmage. The Cardinals, like I say, aren't tackling the ball very well, tackling the ball carry. He broke tackles of the line of scrimmage. Not anything they've done any different tonight. Quarterback run game out of the gun, gets the snap, looks for a place to cut, turned it upfield. He did fake a pitch to the outside and then went up the middle, but nothing new for this uh, Sterling Black Bear team. The Cardinal defense just having trouble stopping it. They are inches short, so the first down. Fourth and inches at the Hoisington 48. Sterling will go for it, still out of the gun. Myers awaiting the snap from Stewart, takes it right up the middle. Hoisington had a knee on him, 
And then it was Jake Speck coming in low, but then the second effort by Brady Myers will get the first down out near the 47. Jake Speck had a hit on him in the backfield, but didn't have a great angle, a one-yard gain on fourth and inches as they continue the drive. Yeah, uh, Speck did his job. He had the hit behind the line of scrimmage. It would have stopped him, but there were no other Cardinals there, so he's able to slide and fall forward. 143 to go in third quarter. First and 10 at the Hoisington 45. Anderson gets the football as he tries to stretch it out to the near sideline. Robinson misses him in the backfield, but Hoisington converges in on him at the 45-yard line on a gain of two yards. Josh Ball, Mason Haxon, and Jake Speck in on the tackle. 124 to go third quarter, 24-7. to Hoisington, Sterling Ball at the 45. As we've seen, uh, third and nine, third and eight, doesn't matter. Fourth and five, the Sterling Black Bear team has the weapons. And uh, the difference on that play, instead of the quarterback cutting it down the hash, he pitched wide, but the Cardinals were ready for it. 37 yards for Allen Anderson, but a couple of plays that have cost Sterling so far here tonight. Second and eight at the Hoisington 45-yard line. They air it out deep, but he overthrows. Gage Farney down the middle, shading over to the left hash. In on coverage, Mason Haxton, Xavier Robinson, under 53 seconds ago. That'll stop the clock, 24-7 Hoisington. Well, we had a third and nine a little while ago, and they moved the chain, so we have a third and eight right now. Big play for the Cardinal defense. The ball at the Cardinal 45-yard line as the clock is stopped with 52.8 left in the third. Well, head coach Derek Schneider felt like the test of their regular season would prepare them going into a physical Hoisington matchup tonight. They played the likes of Cimarron, Lakin, also Elseline and Sedgwick, who have had really good games as it'll be Sterling taking a timeout their first here the second half. Down 24-7. Those timeouts might be valuable as the Black Bears burn their first timeout, so they'll have two left. 53 seconds to go in our third quarter. Hoisington leads it 24-7. We'll be back in 30 seconds on 100.7 Eagle Country. Tonight's game brought to you by Town & Country Supermarket, Manweiler Chevrolet, Dr. Tyler Stramer, and Kathy Burt State Farm Insurance. A gorgeous Friday night in Hoisington to start out the Class 2A playoffs. Cardinals on top, 24-7 against the Sterling Black Bears in the first matchup between these two former CKL foes since 2015. Just joining us after a 41-yard run, Wyatt Pedigo went down with an ankle injury, was able to walk off to the sideline, but has not come into the ball game since early on this third quarter. Now under 53 seconds go, third and eight for Sterling at the Hoisington 45-yard line. Cardinals bringing a lot of guys in the box. Myers to pass. The pocket collapses. Hoisington strips the football out, and Riley Filburn jumps onto the pigskin, and the Cardinals, they force another turnover. That is three on this offense for Sterling. 47.5 to go as Brady Myers saw that pocket collapse and the Cardinals knock it out and Burlburn gets the fumble recovery. There is a penalty going against Hoisington Jamie. as they call this one out. Zach Baird has both hands on his hips right now as he awaits the call a defensive holding penalty is going to go against the Hoisington, and that oh will negate my. the fumble recovery, and they will mark it off from the 45-yard line. Wow. Huge, huge play in this football game. The first time tonight on a straight drop back pass, the pocket collapsed. He didn't even have a chance to look downfield. Fumbled the football, but... Uh, Big penalty against the Cardinals right now. Keeps this drive alive. Gives the Sterling Black Bears first and 10 at the Cardinal 35-yard line. That's the second time we've seen a defensive holding penalty going against the Cardinals. Down to the 35 of Hoisington. And they'll send another man in the backfield. Farney, option play, left side. Philburn wraps him up with two arms and brings down Myers at the 35-yard line. Under 40 seconds to go, third quarter, no gain on the play. Filburn wanted that fumble recovery. He'll settle for a tackle for no gain. Yeah, great by Riley that time from his down nose guard position. Quarterback uh, faked the pitch, tried to go up the hatch, but Riley Filburn from his nose guard position got out there and brought him down, second and 10. Over 30 tackles on the season now for the junior, Riley Filburn. Still at the 35-yard line, might be the final play of the third quarter. Hoisington leads it 24-7. Myers zips it across the middle and is knocked down as it nearly hit off the shoulder pad of Cameron Schneewise and falls to the ground. Another 
flag comes out well after the play from the White Hat. Seven seconds to go here in the third quarter. Hoisington leads it 24-7 after a fairly clean first half. Starting to see those flags come out a lot more here in the second half. And this one might be going against Sterling but as they pick up the flag. And it's an inadvertent flag as they thought it was a... Well, it was deflected. And so I think they thought it was a I late hit know. there for Hoisington, but they didn't see the deflection at the line. Got a little early contact there on one of the wide receivers, I would imagine, and they pick up the flag. Pick up, I don't understand that at all, but uh, Cardinals, Black Bears get another break. Third and, and 10 falls to the 35. ground. So seven ticks left on the clock here in the third quarter. It's going to be a run play for Myers. Starts it out right, cuts it back up. Filburn again bear hugs him and swings him back down with a wrestling move to the turf on a three-yard gain on third and 10 as he takes it out near the 33-yard line. Hoisington trying to get some spirit into this game. Playing without Wyatt Pedigo getting hurt in this third quarter. The fours are in the air. The fourth quarter is upon us. And the Hoisington Cardinals, 12 minutes away from advancing for the fifth straight year on top of Sterling, 24-7. Fourth quarter up next on 100.7 Eagle Country. Tonight's game brought to you by Cardinal Pharmacy, Hoisington Dairy Queen, Dr. Blake Harris, and the Hoisington Recreation Commission. Fourth quarter is here in Hoisington for the opening round of the Class 2A playoffs, and Sterling will have a big fourth down coming up at the Hoisington 33-yard line. They have it at fourth and eight. Hoisington trying to come up with a stand. Wyatt Pedigo, the star running back and linebacker for the Cardinals, their best player still limping around on the sideline with that ankle taped up heavily here this Friday night. So Brady Myers out of the gun. Three wide receivers right side, one to the near side as Weigel, his leading receiver. Looks over to Weigel, floats a high in the air, gets behind Mason, and he dropped it at the five-yard line. Mason wasn't even within a couple of yards of Weigel, and he had it at the five. He could have walked, maybe crawled into the end zone. Instead, it goes in and out of his hands, and he's their best wide receiver. That's usually an automatic touchdown. Instead, Hoisington gets the football back on a turnover on down on fourth and eight. Well, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's almost like poetic justice after the way the uh, penalties have gone against the Cardinals here on that drive, but should have been a touchdown. Cardinals get the ball back on a big miscue. Right at the 33-yard line here for Hoisington. Boxberger goes under center, hands it off. Josh Ball makes his way to the right side, and he is clipped at the 39-yard line and falls forward to the 40. It'll be a five-yard gain, make it a seven-yard gain for Josh Ball, and he's running pretty well, replacing Wyatt Pettigo in the backfield. Yeah, absolutely. Josh has shown all year long that he has the tools to make the cuts and has a burst and is a physical runner at the end of the play. At the 40-yard line, Hoisington needs three yards to pick up the first down. A ball lined up directly behind. A Boxberger pulls it out of his belly. Option play, late toss as it goes out to Donovan. Another flag comes out from the sideline referee as Donovan makes his way across the 45 down to the 46. It'll be a six-yard gain and a first down as of now for Hoisington as that flag came out in the direction that Donovan was running to the near sideline. And it is a holding penalty going against the Cardinals. I'll tell you what, uh, Cardinals are really getting bit on the uh, on the calls here tonight. I mean, they're making penalties and they're getting called for them. Uh, really hurt them a lot in this football game. Fortunate to be up uh, 24 to seven as these penalty yards are racking up, and boy, they're coming at critical times. And Pedigo, he's just kind of. Chomping at the bit to get back in, but I don't think the Hoisington coaching staff has any desire to put Pettigo back in up 24-7 to with just over 11 minutes to go in the game. Penalty scoots it back to the 30, second and 13. Now for the Cardinals with a three wide receiver set. Handoff goes to Josh Ball and nearly broke it to the open, but Brady Myers, their leading tackler, takes him down at the 35 on a gain of three, or I should say a gain of five. Yeah, that was a quick burst that time. Just barely got him, or he had to have a first down and more. But uh, because of that, he stopped him for a short game, brings up third and eight. Well, Hoisington on the season, they have converted 42% of their third downs. This is a long one, though, third and eight at their own 35-yard line. Three wide receivers as Robinson lines up in the slot. They throw to Brewer, catches it at the 41-yard line, then spun down by Casey Duft right at the 41 as it will be a gain of six yards, now about three yards short. So the first down, fourth and two and a half for Hoisington. 
Now Cardinals with this lead. Fourth quarter, 10-23 left. Looks like the punting team is out. Uh, eating up a lot of time with these uh, penalties and drives that the Cardinals are having. And the Black Bears have given us a lot of opportunities with their fumbles and et cetera. But penalties have really stymied the Cardinal offense on the last two drives. Cardinals up 17 points as we duck under 10 minutes to go as Cole Steinert's out there, but Zach Barrett wanting that play clock to wind all the way down. And now Hoisington will take their first timeout here in the second half. Both teams have taken one timeout here in the second half. 9.55 to go fourth quarter. Hoisington 24, Sterling 7. The Cardinals trying to hold on without Pedigo to get to the second round of the playoffs. Back in 30 seconds on 100.7 Eagle Country. Tonight's game brought to you by Cardinal Lanes and Marmy Auto Group. 9.55 to go in our fourth period, 24-7. Hoisington trying to hold on against the Sterling Black Bears in the opening round. First matchup mentioned since 2015. Hoisington won that ball game 56-0, and they won in 2014 on a shutout as well. Oh. The Cardinals have won eight oh. out of the last ten games against the Sterling Black Bears, including the last two former CKL opponents. So it'll be Hoisington coming out. Boxber, who also can punt the football, will throw it. Has a man caught at the 45-yard line. It's good for a first down. Wow. So Boxber is looking like he's going to do the pooch punt. Instead, he completes a pass out to Robinson at the 45. He falls down immediately, but converts on fourth down for Hoisington. They take it out to the 46. You know, what a gutsy call, and also what a nice little play. It was designed to just get a couple yards, and that's what it's got, kind of a low-risk play, except it's on fourth down gives the Cardinals more time. Big play in the ball game as Hoisington trying to stretch this one out with the lead. Josh Ball bestowed the football and he rumbles out to midfield and brought down by Stewart and a slew of other Black Bears of Sterling. It'll be a four-yard game for Josh Ball. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. That play wasn't working at all when Pettigo was in the game. Up the middle, straight handoff to the fullback, right or left. But boy, it's starting to work now. Maybe the Cardinal offensive line starting to wear down this defense. Just underneath the Cardinal logo at midfield for Hoisington on second and six. Josh Ball gets a football again, hurdles over a defender at the 35-yard line, carries two Black oh, Bears whistle. out near the 40-yard line, and finally a flag comes out late as Ball is making his way to the 40 down at the 41-yard line. A nine-yard gain and a first down for Josh Ball right now as that flag came out as Ball is trying to continue to push that pile forward and has a block in the back going against the big red machine. Wow. You know, one thing I noticed about that play, and I'll go ahead and say it, you know, the play was stopped and the whistle did not blow, and after the whistle did not blow was when that block in the back came. That usually signifies someone uh, in the pile comes in and runs into a tackler in the pile in the back and uh, another big penalty call against the Cardinals. It has felt anything but smooth here in the second half for Hoisington. Back to the 48-yard line on the 10-yard penalty. Second and seven. Boxberger fakes the handoff, floats it down the right sideline, trying to find Haxton, and Haxton a little push off, and he might get past interference offensively as it goes incomplete to the sideline, and it is. My goodness. Wow, flags are coming out left and right here tonight in the second half after a clean first half as they're going to call offensive pass Pass interference against Haxton trying to separate on the near sideline. I'll tell you. It wasn't even a catchable ball. That one was about five yards into the sideline. Well, there's a lot of hand jostling as there is in football now. Uh, the official called the last hand jostle as the ball was way out of bounds. But uh, right now, I don't know how many penalties we have. At Ten in the second half. Big penalties. Uh, but the Cardinals up by... More than two scores, 24 to 7. It's second and 22. Back at the 34 yard line in their own territory. Trap play has a little bit of a seam here for Hoisington's Donovan out to the 40 yard line, then rolled over at the 45 and takes it down to the 49. That'll be a good gain for Braxton Donovan as he takes it from the 34 to the 49 on a 15 yard gain. That'll help after all those penalties. Now third and seven. Yeah, the offensive line really doing a good job here as uh, this uh, second half goes on. Plays that weren't working at the start of the game are really starting to pile up some yards. 
kind of gouging at this defense. Cardinals just have to try to keep the yellow flags in the officials' pockets. Jason Bradley, who did not start at center, is back in. Gives the snap over to Donovan, or Braxton, or Derek Boxberger, throws it out to the flat. Robinson has the catch at the 50-yard line and somehow wiggles his way down to the Sterling 41. As that'll be a 10-yard play on third and seven. Hoisington converts on what started out as second and 22. Now they have it at the Sterling 41. Yeah, what a nice little pass play. Two, two pass receivers out there, a little cross about a yard past the line of scrimmage. He hits uh, Xavier going down the sideline. What a nice play. Two wide receivers, Brewer to the near side. Haxton out to the far side. It'll be Boxberger bestowing the football to Josh Ball, and it'll be Brady Myers jumping on the back of Ball out near the 37 on a gain of four yards from the sophomore. Now this Cardinal offensive line starting to pound on the Sterling defense a little bit now. Cardinals mixing in the pass with the run and inside the tackles we're making yards. Josh Ball really doing a great job. The offensive line giving him a crease and he's really taking advantage of it. Hoisington playing without Wyatt Pedigo went down with an ankle injury in the third quarter. 7.23 to go and counting here in the fourth frame. Cardinals up 24 to 7 against Sterling on their home field. Josh Ball just trying to plant a hand into the back of one of his teammates and rides the pile forward out to the 30 and a first down. A big run for Josh Ball, seven yards for the sophomore as he continues to put in quite a productive effort here in replacing Wyatt Pettigo. That has to be creeping up on his career game because he's having a heck of a lot of runs of the five to ten yard variety again behind the offensive line on the right side. Uh, Riley Philburn and Snaywise. Ball does have a career high in yards here tonight, closing in on 100. Toss play, Robinson shows off the speed to the 25, breaks a tackle at the 20, still on his feet to the 15-yard line, and then he's brought out of bounds near the 10. 6.50 to go in the fourth quarter. Xavier Robinson, who has been patient, getting his carries here tonight, takes it down the 10 on a 20-yard scamper. Yeah, what a nice pitch play by the Cardinals and Xavier D broke a tackle with his speed. Someone had an angle on him, but he turned on a little extra over gear and got by that, turned down the sideline. Cardinals down at first and goal to go. It's tough to tackle when you're running 50 miles per hour going downfield. First and goal at the 10. 6.50 to go, fourth quarter. Hoisington trying to put this one away on top 24-7. to Two running backs in the backfield. They spread out with three wide receivers. Donovan is in the slot. Hand off Josh Ball, and it'll be Allen Anderson hitting him from behind as Ball is dancing around the backfield. He gains about a yard, second and goal from the nine. Yeah, came in from the backside. Good pursuit that time. Down the line of scrimmage. Not much going on there. Uh, Ball was kind of riding the pile forward, and then he got hit from the side and behind. Uh, picked up a yard on the play, second goal to go from the eight. Hoisington without Pedigo with an ankle injury in the third quarter here tonight in the opening round of the playoffs. 6.20 to go, fourth quarter, 24-7. The Cardinals have it second and goal at the nine-yard line. It'll be Donovan in motion. Stretch play goes that way. Braxton angling to the goal line, and he falls in across the goal line, and they're going to mark him short. The ball is across the goal line. Oh, and we had a pretty good angle from here. They're going to mark him down at the one, third and goal for Hoisington as Braxton Braxton Donovan apparently did everything but finish that one off. Yeah, it was a good play down to the goal line. Uh, looked like we had some chalk fly up on that one, but uh, he must have bounced the football in. It's uh, about a football, third and a football for a touchdown. Only one running back, Josh Ball. He has one TD so far here tonight, closing in on 100 yards. It'll be Boxberger turning around. Ball goes airborne. He is across. Touchdown, Hoisington. 5.31 to go in the fourth quarter, 24-7. Ball soars over the line and scores six more for Hoisington. Now on top, 30-7. to What a drive by the Cardinals. How many penalty yardage did we overcome with that on a mix of successful running plays inside the tackles behind the offensive line and Josh Ball, Braxton Donham, misdirection. Xavier Robinson with a pitch from Boxberger, big play. Nice little pass play on a fourth and two. And the Cardinals march it in. Here's the extra point for Braxton Donovan as he drills this one down the middle. 5.31 to go as the lead now grows. 31-7, to the Cardinals on top. And you talk about that play, how big was that? Ball close to midfield, and Hoisington looked like they're going to line up for a pooch punt by Boxberger. Instead, he completes a pass for six, seven yards, extended the drive, and eventually we see the final result with a touchdown. Yeah, giant play, you know. 
fourth down midfield. Uh, looked like we're going to punt, but you knew something was up when Boxberger goes back in punting formation, and uh, we pulled it off a, a play designed to get two yards. It got two and more. Uh, big penalties overcome on that drive, at least four or five of them. I can't even, I've lost track. Uh, but the Cardinal offense really started to churn it out uh, up the middle, and when that happens, this offense usually starts to go, and that's an example of then. The offensive line started to wear down Sterling a little bit. It's the only thing I can think of, and Josh Ball has shown in the past he has some talent at running back, and he's really displayed it on tonight. Career game for him, and it's nice to have someone like Josh Ball who's had experience this year come in and really take over the reins. Yeah, they, they like that. Kind of a handful of players from that sophomore class, Josh Ball being one of those guys, really kind of looking forward to seeing Holt Hansley just get a little bit bigger. They say he has the vision. He's a smart runner, much like his other brothers, just waiting for him to kind of mature a little bit more and grow into his body. 5.31 to go fourth quarter, 31-7. to Poisington on top in the first round of the playoffs as Donovan Boots this one over to the left side of the field away from us. Picked up on a run at the 18-yard line by Farney, and he'll take it out across the 30, and then finally brought down in a sea of red and white of Hoisington across the 35 and near the 37. 5.24 to go in our game, 31-7. to And although a bigger, more cushioned lead for the Cardinals, this game has been anything but smooth and easy for Hoisington in round number one. Yeah, you know, the, that big turnaround where we had 10 points in a minute and a half after the the mental mistake by the Black Bear receiving kick team to let the ball lie on the turf and give the Cardinals a first down. We jumped up 10, and that helped a lot. And then we tacked on another one on a, a drive where we it was like a 70-yard drive, but we had to gain 105 yards because of the penalties, but we did it. Brady Myers with his jersey untucked starts out in the gun. First and 10 from their own 37-yard line. Pocket again collapsed, makes something out of nothing. Angles out near sideline, 45-50. Runs by Josh Ball, but he gets a hand on his leg and trips him up out near the 40-yard line. As that'll be a 28-yard run by Brady. Well, that's one thing he does. The pocket collapsed. The Cardinals are doing a good job. But he was it's almost like he was waiting for it it to collapse as uh, he just squirted out and you know it took a while to happen so all the defenders were downfield trying to re uh, cover receivers he had a lot of grain and he's he's scary in the open like a lot of players we've seen this year 22 yard run has Myers over 180 yards here tonight surveys the defense out of the gun Anderson lined up to his left looking to throw on first and 10 from the 40 across the middle oh. and is deflected and a nice job by Hoisenden getting a hand on this one for the Cardinals is going to be Jake Speck. So Speck playing and replacing Pedigo at that linebacker position gets a hand on it and knocks it down second and ten now for Sterling. Oh, what a great play by Speck because it looked like the receiver on a post pattern right down the hash mark. It looks like the ball was on target. It would have been a big play, but Jake Speck dropping back in coverage, reached up and reached back in the air and knocked that ball down. What a big play by Jacob Speck. It's like, hello, Mr. Speck. Welcome to varsity football. He's really played a whale of a game. We've seen that happen in postseason where some guys kind of step up and they eventually become a big-time player the following year. Again, airing it out, and a man open at the 10-yard line, backpedaling and unable to come up with a catch is going to be Odin. Cody Odin had five yards on the nearest Hoisington defender, Josh Ball, and also Xavier Robinson, but he had a, got spun around, turning around looking for the football, and it goes incomplete. Five receivers out, it's tough to cover them all, and that matchup was when they wanted a speedy receiver against a linebacker playing for the Cardinals, and he got he was behind, behind him from the get-go as they come out with four wide receivers Here's set. Here's a third and 10 play from the 40-yard line. Myers rolls out just a little bit to the right, throws it across the middle, and a belting hit as a flag comes out. Holt Hanslick knocks the receiver down at the points of that potential catch as it was Cody Royer, the intended oh, receiver. And another us. flag comes out from the near sideline referee, and it might be pass interference to go on against the Cardinals as they bring the That's football That's a holding, up. defensive holding again? Yeah, defensive holding going against the Hoisington My Cardinals goodness. the third time that we've seen that here tonight. And that'll be a first down for Sterling with 4.36 to go in the fourth quarter. Not completely, completely shutting the door on the Black Bears this Friday night. 
Well, penalties are something that uh, the Cardinals have really overcome so far. This time on offense, let's see if the defense can do the same. Clock taken down. 40. Takes it down to the 30-yard line now for first and 10. Snap goes back to Myers. Hoisington rushing in on him. Can't find the quarterback. Into double coverage. The ball tipped and then caught by Odin out at the one-yard line. Oh, the Cardinals tipped it up into the air, and then Odin came down with it on his back on the turf, and he hauls it in at the one. A 29-yard reception. It'll be first and goal for Sterling. One and getting another score in with 4.28 to go in the fourth. You almost feel like they deserve that because they've missed at least three wide-open receivers for touchdowns tonight. That time, great coverage, triple coverage, he caught it. Still at the gun. It'll be Myers just trying to dart in underneath the defense, and he is across for a touchdown. Comes with just over four minutes to go in the game. Brady Myers has his second rushing touchdown of the contest and puts the Black Bears up to 13 points, 31-13 now with the PAT coming up. Yeah, it's nice to have those 10 points we had in a flurry there uh, as uh, via the penalty, uh, the Black Bears take advantage of a big penalty called against the Cardinals. Again, a defensive holding on, you know, they don't call pass interference. Is defensive holding the same thing, or are they calling it uh, off the line of scrimmage? What? I'll have to ask someone after the game. But uh, big play for the Black Bears. Gets them down and gets them in. That stops 17 straight unanswered points for Hoisington on that one-yard run by Myers. They go for two, but it's going to be intercepted right at the goal line by Cameron Schneewise as he threw it right in between the numbers six and nine of Cameron Schneewise. Comes up with the interception. Two-point conversion unsuccessful. 4.14 to go here in the fourth quarter. 31 to 13. Hoisington with the lead, just trying to eke out a win here in the opening round. Playing with that wide pedigree for the majority of the second half as he goes down midway through the third quarter with an ankle injury. They taped it up on the sideline, and he's been kind of walking back and forth, pacing the sideline. But with the lead right now, I don't think this coaching staff wants to take any chances. Yeah, I, you know, even if they could, I don't know if he feels up to going back in there. Just you know, his his ankle by Coach Haxon is taped into a 90-degree angle, and then they put the shoe on, and then they tape that shoe on top of the tape on top of the shoe and ankle. It looks like, you know, it looks like a cyclops leg down there. But, you know, it's good to see after that way it looked. It's good to see wide up and moving around. Hopefully, hopefully it's the kind of thing that he can get it limbered up and ready to go by next week. So Hoisington can hold on to the final 4-14. They move on to the second round for the fifth straight year where they take on either Ellsworth or Cimarron. That game in Cimarron here tonight. And no score yet on that one. Ellsworth 2-6. and six. We've seen Ellsworth come into Hoisington, though, and saw Morgan Kelly throw for over 200 yards in that game. If he's on target throwing up those Hail Marys, you know, maybe the Bearcats have a fighting chance on the road tonight. Well, you never know. Uh, you know, as we've seen all year long, Cardinals struggle with mobile, talented quarterbacks as we've struggled against this fine uh, Sterling Black Bear signal caller. Scott City knocked off Nickerson 31-0. Here's the onside kick. Hoisington dies forward across the 50-yard line. That's Mason Paxton who comes up with a football. Hoisington gets the onside kick. And they'll start this drive out at the Sterling 49 with 4.14 to go in the contest, 31-13, Hoisington up. Now the Cardinals come out with their offense who's been moving the ball. They've had a lot of trouble with penalties here in the last three or four drives. Let's see, try to have some clean plays here for the Cardinal offense. So again, Jason Bradley comes back in as center after not starting here tonight. Blackwell shifts back over to the left side of that offensive line. Another trap play is going to be Robinson, and he is bottled up right across the line of scrimmage after a two-yard gain out to the 47 as we skip under four minutes to go here in our fourth quarter 31-13 Hoisington second and eight coming up now, the Black Bears have come up with six men along the defensive front six down linemen as we have a timeout on the field so a timeout taken by the Sterling Black Bears comes with 405 to go in the fourth frame Hoisington Looking like they're on their way to the second round on top, 31 to 13. It's Cardinal football, 100.7 Eagle Country. Lakin on top of the Norton Blue Jays, 38 to 14, with 2:22 to go in the third quarter. So Lakin Bronx, seven and one on the season, 
flexing their muscles against the MCL on top of the Blue Jays, 38-14 to late in the third quarter. Maybe those teams out there on yeah, the west maybe. side of the state might, are a little better than we thought. We might see Cimarron if Hoisington can hold on. 4.06 to go, fourth quarter out of the timeout. Beginning this one with second and eight is Josh Ball. Now they pull it back out. Mason Haxton taking the snap at quarterback, runs it to the outside of the 40-yard line, and then trying to score through a couple of defenders, and they let that play drag on a lot as Haxton takes out to the 40 on a seven-yard gain, a yard short to the first down. Well, a little while ago, uh, Josh Ball, they let the play go on and on and then called a clip against the Cardinals. That time, Mason Haxton's still churning his legs, and they blow the whistle. Right when he blows the whistle, Mason squirts up for four more yards. So things aren't quite working as the Cardinals want to on every play. So Donovan, or I should say Boxberger, out. It is Mason Haxton, the sophomore, who started at quarterback here again his sophomore season but ruptured his spleen after the week one game against Pratt. Now back in the last two weeks, goes under center, turns around, bestows the football to Josh Ball, has some blockers out to the 30, and then it stumbles down inside the 25-yard line and close to the 20. A 19-yard run by Josh Ball, who just saw a path and followed his blockers up the gut of the defense and takes it for 19 yards out to the 21. Yeah, you'd have to call this the offensive line just starting to exert their will and the Cardinals calling the right plays. I was going to say Josh Ball doing his best imitation of Wyatt Petty go tonight, but he's kind of stepped into his own, I think. He's really having a whale of a game. That run takes him over 100 yards here tonight. A career night for Josh Ball. Maybe the coming out party here for Ball. 2.50 to go, fourth quarter. 31-13. Here's first and 10. Option play. Haxton has it. Angles down. 15. Takes it down to the 10. 5. And then dives to the right pylon, and he is hit out near the three-yard line. It'll be first and goal for a Hoisington on an 18-yard run by Hax, and that right pylon is down and flat, but they're going to say he stepped out at the three. Well, I was watching the whole thing, and it looked like he dove and hit the pylon with the football, but his foot must have been on the chalk. But what a great play by Mason that time, and a great fake. Uh, you know, the defense thinks ball is going to get this ball. And he's coming right at us. He pulls it out, gets around the end, showed some speed and athletic ability. And it looked like he hit the pylon with the ball, but his foot was on the sideline. So instead, they mark him out at the two-yard line again. Haxton looks up. He got hit out of bounds. So the clock not moving right now. He'll go under center. Jason Bradley. Robinson goes in motion. Haxton kept it himself, and he has flipped over. Oh, he gets rid of the football. Josh Ball, good fake. <laughs> Haxton took the thumping on that one at the one-yard line. Josh Ball escapes into the end zone. Touchdown, Hoisington. 2.36 to go in the fourth quarter, and the Cardinals tack on six more, now on top 37-13. to 13. Yeah, no one knew uh, Josh Ball had. He, he kind of ran through, and they tackled Haxton, and Ball turned around from the back of the end zone, and no one knew he had the football, including me. So it was a great fake all around by the ball carrier and the quarterback and he waltzes in. Here's the extra point by Braxton Donovan as he had an awkward stance into that kick, but enough to get it through. 2.36 to go in the game. Hoisington starting to stretch away once again, 38-13. to The Cardinals, they can feel a second-round matchup against either Cimarron or Ellsworth as they're just over two minutes away from getting a win and doing it all in the second half without their star player, Wyatt Pettigos. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you have to give the a credit. They've overcome a lot, overcome a lot of penalties, and uh, Sterling Black Bear defense is really stopping our run game in the first half. But, uh, you know, as, as this second half has gone on, it's like we've turned it up a notch and just kind of wore down that front seven for the Black Bear defense because our D back up the middle to the right has started to work, and then our misdirection play started to work. We've had a few... Really nice pass plays, but that offensive line is starting to open up some holes. Josh Ball, the career night continues. Three rushing touchdowns. That is a career high for Josh Ball. 118 yards, a career high, and also 19 carries, a career high. Donovan again to kick this one off in the 40-yard line as he jets it out to the 17-yard line as Farney has it there, navigates his way to the 30, and then he is spun down at the 33-yard line as a number of Hoisington Cardinals coming in on the tackle. Xavier Robinson in there amongst the bunch, and Jake Speck as well. 2.29 to go in the game, 38-13 Hoisington. First matchup for the 
Cardinals and the Black Bears since 2015. They used to play a lot when they are both in the CKL. They had that lineup, but even before that as well, as Hoisington has won eight out of the last ten games. Last win for Sterling in this matchup was back in 2011. And right now, Hoisington on their way to getting to the second round for the fifth straight year. As Sterling will start out with the football at their own 34-yard line and 2.29 to go, down 38-13. to Myers out of the gun, quick handoff out to Farney, breaks a tackle in the backfield and then just speeds close to the 40-yard line before he is folded over at the 39. Boy, I tell you, he had a head of steam going just outside the hash, but it's like he ran into a brick wall over there. I can't see who it was, but two. Was it Robinson? Yeah, Hutchcraft and, and, and Hanslick. Jake Speck and yeah. Hanslick over there. Yeah, just ran. He just stopped like a brick wall uh, three yards downfield. Looked like he had some steam to head on down the field. He has some scary speed, but Cardinal defense held him right there for a gain of four. 150 left and counting in the football game, second and six. I think Sterling can kind of feel the end of their season getting closer, not in a huge rush with just under two minutes to go. Now getting the line of scrimmage at their own 37-yard line. And they get the football out and it does come out, but the ball carrier looks like Farney or Anderson fall back on top of it, and it's going to be Gage Farney out at the 40-yard line. So he'll gain two on that fumble recovery out to the 40. Yeah, the ball came out on the handoff behind the line of scrimmage. The ball bounced forward for a yard or two. The ball carrier just happened to be right behind the ball, pounced on it. Sterling's hurt themselves with uh, with giving us some opportune times with fumbles and miscues on res- uh, kickoffs, but uh, we'll take it. Four wide receivers for second and four at their own 40-yard line as we hit the one-minute mark of the game. The Cardinals on their way for a first-round victory. Handoff goes to Farney again, and he is met right at the line of scrimmage. Jake Speck, Cameron Schneewise, and also for Hoisington, Hanslick in on the tackle. No gain on the play to the 40. Now the Cardinals uh, ticking down now under under 40, 40 seconds left in the game. That's the second game of the week where this thing's, you know, been kind of scary the whole game. Not a clean football game. I'll be interested to see how many. Do you, you keep track of penalties, don't you? Yeah, accepted eight penalties so far tonight <laughs> against Hoisington, but could have well, been a lot all worse. of them were in the second half, I think. Uh, here's fourth and four at the 40 yard line. The ball game right now. Sterling will keep it on the ground as Farney trying to bulldoze his way into a first down, and the forward progress out to the 35 will get it before a four. Man wrecking crew of Hoisington brings them back a couple of yards. There'll be a five yard pickup on fourth and four out to the 45. 14 seconds to go. Sterling maybe get one more play in their 2018 season. Yeah, they're going to give it all they got. 14 seconds left, I think. First down stops the clock. That gives them one more play, unless it's an, oh, they're going to start it up. That's it for the. How about this call? Timeout taken by Sterling. <laughs> With. We'll stop the clock with 9.4 to go, and Hoisington up 38 to 13. It does allow Joey Hartman to get in the game, as Farney will go to the sideline. Okay, get, get I like this play. I like this play. Yeah. It, uh, I was questioning at first. Derek Schneider, second-year coach for Sterling, getting his subs in there and really kind of letting his seniors get out of the ball game. This is a Sterling team that doesn't have a whole lot out for football this year. They only had 27 out then. Conan Ball, their starting running back, tore his ACL in week two against Marion. So they've been without their main running back, and they get their five seniors out, and Derek Schneider, a good move there. And I do like that. I'll apologize, jumping the gun. 9.4 to go, but Brady Myers, a junior, he'll be back next year for Sterling. He'll take a knee to finish <laughs> off the play, and he slips as he loses the football down at the line of scrimmage. He was going to take a knee. I mean, they've had fumbleitis tonight, no doubt about it. Have really helped us with the turning over the ball. That has been an issue all season long for Sterling coming into this opening round matchup in the playoffs. The Hoisington Cardinals wasn't overly clean playing without Pedigo with an injury in the second half, but they win it. Five straight wins in the opening round for the Hoisington Cardinals as they defeat the Sterling Black Bears 38-13 to move on to the second round the Class 2A playoffs.